Ladies and gentlemen, straight from Okinawa, Camp Schwab, episode 82, Hard to Kill, Corporal Andrew. How we doing, brother? Doing all right, brother. Doing all right. I'm sampering and I'm fine. I love it. I love it. Pumped to finally get you you on. Me and you've been going back and forth for a little bit, but hey, we made it work. We made it work. We made it work and that's... That's what counts. Absolutely. You know, we do Absolutely. what we say we're gonna do. You no, know, you know it. So, all right, we're in the we're in we're in Okinawa, we're up at Schwab. Give us give us the mood, man. How are we feeling out there? Well, things are, you know, man, things are just see last deployment when we were here was it was, you know, it was amidst it was heavy heavy COVID. So we, you know, talk about things being up in the air being like abstract um we you know we had the feeling going over like we're not gonna do we're not gonna do fucking anything you know like i i think i we did the math i think like um like something like over a month of that deployment was stand by stand by stand by so we got we got my boy dre Uh, on right now dre this is corporal he's he's out in uh okinawa at camp schwab doing his thing Uh And uh, we we just got on. We're just talking a little shit. What's going on, Corporal? Thanks for letting me get on here, Nick. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a pleasure to have you, Doc. So, mm-hmm. uh, Antrim, uh, Dre uh, got attached over to two three with me, and we uh, we pumped. We did a pump out to Hellman, and uh, oh, obviously yeah. a stud. Look at him. That's He's awesome. Gorgeous. Yeah, look at it. Yeah, you know That's what a gorgeous I'm saying? Man, right there. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, I was I'm honored there. and blessed to be bit. in your presence. What base are you on over there? In Schwab. Schwabski. Oof, that's the worst. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Just getting to the PX, a little bit of a haze fest. I know. What about the uh, hurricanes or anything going on right now with the weather out there? Yeah, that keep yeah, that keeps happening. It keeps like knocking on the door intermittently, you know. Um I remember. It just comes whenever they think it's gonna happen, it doesn't happen. Like whenever they tell you to go into T one yeah, exactly. and stay in your room, yep, yep. it doesn't end up coming. But then you're just out on a walk and you're out on a ruck run and then a typhoon just comes in and just fucks <laughs> you in the butt. That's what no happened lube. to me. I, I yeah, no lube. I I was going on a ruck run last pump and like halfway through and a typhoon just snuck up on me out of nowhere and broke the shit out of my phone. So oh. I had to Go to the rest of the point with no phone, and that sucked. You still hook, you hooked up with the SoftBank mafia out there? With the what? Oh, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. I didn't figure that out. I didn't figure that out first time. Now I got it figured out. Now I'm dialed in. Nice. I am squared away in that regard. <laughs> I get porn anywhere. There you go. Love it. Got, hey, it's yeah. necessary. Anyway, mm-hmm. so b- before we get bombarding you with questions, brother, why don't you introduce yourself? Um, how you got into the Marine Corps, maybe who your mentor was, how you how you pushed to the 0311 field, how you got into machine gun. Bring it on. Give it to me. Um, all right. So came okay. So came from came from a military family. Uh my father was an airman. Uh he he was an intelligence guy. Um, so the military was the first thing I ever really understood. Um growing up being a coming into being a young man um what i've always wanted to do what my dream was when i was a kid was uh, i wanted to be an actor i wanted to act in movies and in tv that was what i always wanted to do i was always involved in the arts going through school like i decided like this is what i'm gonna do when i was like 13 um and you know going through high like i taught I taught like men's choir a little bit before the military. Like I, 
was super involved in that shit. No, like this was completely out of left field. Like nobody <laughs> saw this shit coming. Um, but I, I was at, at a place where I graduated from high school and, you know, long familiar story short, but I was living with my grandparents when I turned 18 and my grandparents were like, Hey, you know, nothing personal against you, but you know, we kind of, when you turn 18, we kind of like to see you like, you know, yeah, get the fuck <laughs> <laughs> you know, Fucking late. Like we're trying to be old yeah. for a second. Like yeah. we're trying to be, this is this our like second go around of raising a kid and uh, you know, we're old as shit. I so hear you. I hear you. time to get out. And I was like, I was like, cool. I was a lifeguard at the time. Like I, I, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know Dick from fuck. I was, a, I was pretty <laughs> shitty at school, did not take it seriously. Um, I got a, a, a choir scholarship to Oregon state university, but they I would have those? had, to have, yeah, it's a thing. I, yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess, that they, but they, uh, I would have had to be a music major and I was like, I don't know if that's getting me to where I want to be. I don't know if I want to accrue all that debt and then not be guaranteed a career, you know, Smart. for shit. Honestly, uh, dude, the way I look at that though, still, at least you had the balls to be creative. A lot of people like the, and, and uh, including myself, dude, I mean, I'm a creative person. I remember at that age, everyone's like, Oh, that, that's gay. That's gay. This is gay. And, uh, yeah. I want to try yeah. to be cool for who, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? For what? At least, at least you did that. You know what I mean? Yeah, the only thing, yeah, the only way to fit in in like our demographic is just to just listen to Tool and do steroids and fucking and just get hammered Back. every single day. Like that's yep. what's being badass yeah, and yeah. um worthless. We I think that I think that we all realize, you know, sooner or later that we're just being kids, you that's know, and that mean. isn't what's good to go. But I thank you. I appreciate that. Um yeah, I've always been very I don't know, art focus. So I hung around like, yeah, like I said, nobody saw this shit coming. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I was, I was about, I was like a day away from signing a $1,600 a month lease, like 12 month lease as an 18 year old kid, the lifeguard, no fucking clue what I was going to do. Um, just because cause I just knew I had to get out of the house. Yeah, I hear you. And I was telling, I was playing Xbox I was telling my buddy about it um, back when I was uh, I was living on Langley. Um, we kept in contact for like the last like four years, just playing Xbox with each other. I'm venting to him like, yeah, dude, I don't know what I'm going to fucking do. And he's like, dude, come live with me and my family. Perfect. I'm like, what? Just a boy, just a boy from high school. He's like, dude, come live with me and my my mom and dad. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? He's like, no, I'm not. I'm not joking. And then a week later, I'm over there and I'm, I'm meeting his 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 mom and dad and his dad is was also an airman, also a master sergeant in uh, in the Air Force, um, and yeah, they they took me. They didn't know who the hell I was. It was just one of their son's friends, and they took me in. And um, you know that that I would say that that was definitely be my friend's dad was my mentor because he's okay. the one that I remember. I I lived with them for no more than six months, or yeah, I believe it was about six months. And um, I remember we were around the kitchen aisle one day, the kitchen, the little kitchen island. And he was being like, you know, Aiden, he's like, I don't think that you want to be an actor right now. I think that you need to be an actor right now. Because if you were, you'd be getting up every morning and you'd be taking steps to make yeah. this a reality. And I don't see, I, don't, I know that you could, and I don't see that coming from you. Like, I don't think that, I think that you, that might be your dream. I don't know if it's what you need to spend 18 like at age 18 i don't know if that's what you need to be pursuing at this moment in time and you went like, to okay. their house with the intentions to still do music or that had already that aspiration had gone away already? yeah yeah i i i still knew that i wanted to be an actor i kind of spent six months just kind of fucking around because i when i i, I my family all the men in my family have had problems with substances um mm. at one point or another and it's been a downfall it's been the downfall at, at one point or another of every single one of them. And I knew, so I knew if there was a gene that I had that gene. <laughs> so I was terrified, like all throughout high school, never went to a party, never smoked a cigarette, Smart. never fucking did and never did anything. <laughs> when I came to similar stories, are. <laughs> I, I, I'd love to hear yours. Um, 
but yeah, I, can't, I came to Virginia. I was with, I was with guy. I was with guys that I've known, you know, for the greater, for being a military kid, like the relationships that you do have that stick around, like that's like a big deal. Cause you're going around from place to place in the country. You're always leaving people behind, always meeting that new does people. Suck that I hate that. Yeah. So you have to, you're like, shit, I'm never going to have no fucking friends or I got to get really good at meeting people. <laughs> um, so those relationships you do have that endure, you know, it's fucking, it's important. It's real. Yeah, exactly. It is real. It's really shit. So I was with, you know, people that I felt, I felt like loved me and I felt safe around. So then when I, when I moved over, then I started like drinking. I had my, I had my first drink when, uh, I think it was the day that 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 Joker movie came out. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah, I got hot. I got I got high and drunk at the same time for the first time, and I went and saw that movie, and that'll always be one of my favorite memories. I, love- <laughs> but I I think I think that's because of that because I waited so long, and I I waited for the environment to be right to be in a good place in my mind, like spiritually and emotionally. Uh, I think that that has led to me having a good relationship with with alcohol and with substances and i don't i got i got i kind of got out of my system that being said that six months i didn't do shit um i just went i just went to parties with my brother because he was he was a freshman in college he was rushing a frat so i got to like he he took me along to all the all the little events and so i i kind of he showed you the world a little bit he showed me the world a little bit i got that shit out of my system like what I've been saving myself from doing in high school. I got out of my system before I joined the military, but, but we had, but my dad said that to me, or I call him my dad. Now he's basically like my dad, but my buddy's dad, John, uh, John said to me, he was like, I don't think you need to be an actor right now. I don't think that's where, you know, like you still like what I heard in my head was like, you're still a boy. So now, now looking back at that, are, are you, know, are you grateful? To the ends of the earth, one hundred percent, with every every fiber of my being, like that was definitely the point in my life where I took control of the path, and I took con- like I was I wasn't just another teenage boy rolling like a tumbleweed through yep. whatever no wherever. Point. No direction. No fucking yeah. point. Just doing what everybody says that I should do because I don't want to disappoint anybody. Even what year did you join? My... 2020. And where you were in Langley, that's where uh, in like Virginia or some shit? Yeah, that's where I, I met him in Langley. But I when I joined, I was in Springfield, Virginia, which is a little it's like 20 minutes. West. 20 minutes southwest of D.C. Yeah. Where are you born? I was born. I was born in Fort Bragg, but I only was there for a couple months. If you don't mind me asking, like, what happened to your parents? And I only ask because, uh, very similar I, I, stories. Exactly. My my story's almost yeah <laughs> so similar. Kind of creepy. Like, wow. It's not That's awesome. But the thing is, is there's a ton of us who had situations where we grew up and we inherited certain things we inherited. And we knew right away, just like you said, like you weren't drinking, you weren't smoking, you weren't doing nothing like that in high school because you knew you had to get out of that. So there is like there's a group of us that I've encountered. And it's, you know, it's almost like the society is set up like that, that it feeds in, you know, the, these type of individuals like us get fed into this uh, pathway because it's an open door for us. And obviously, you know, it works out for the best in most cases. But um, yeah, like what happened to your parents? Well, if you don't mind me asking. So when I was very young. Actually, before I was born, my mother was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis um, and that restrained her to a wheelchair for I can't even remember seeing her standing. Um, And, you know, my. My father, he spent a lot, he spent a lot of time away because he, you know, he was getting, you know, deployments for fucking long (laughs) in like 2003 and four and five and six. Um, so he was That's just, he was, he was old father, right? Not your friend's dad. My birth know? father. Yeah. He was a Marine or what? Uh, what was that? He was a Marine doing those deployments or army. No, he was, no, he was an airman just going to oh, Qatar gotcha, for a long gotcha, ass gotcha. time. 
Yeah, those are long as shit. They're yeah, too- they are. Yeah. Um, but he he was always gone. I was always, from a very young age, I was taking care of my mom rather than the other way around. Um, when I was when I was four, we were at we were stationed at a what is now Joint Base Lewis McCord in Washington State. But back back then, it was just McCord Air Force Base. Um, she was still trying to cook, like she was still trying to do like independent shit, and uh, we we had it noticed, but like a, a Lay's chip bag fell onto the stove, and because uh, we were like watching TV, and the house started to burn down, like there the house started to burn down while we were in it, and she couldn't, like she couldn't get, she couldn't get low to the ground. Like she was like coughing because she, you know, she couldn't get down on the ground. She couldn't fucking army crawl. She was in the chair, but I was low to the ground because I was four. Um, so I could still like kind of operate, I guess. And she was you like, child? what was that? Are you an only child at this point? I am. I am. I have, I have half siblings now, but I, I, at this point, yes, I was an only child. Um, my biological mother and father only ever had me. Um, but I, yeah, she couldn't really get herself out of there. And so I, I took her little like joystick and I steered her out of the, out of the the house. And then I went and got the neighbors and me and my mom just sat and watched her fucking house burn down on the Ooh, sidewalk. Damn. Um, but I, 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 it was cause I was just, I was like the man of the house, you know what I'm saying? Um, and her mind, like it's her mind too. Like her mind starts to go. She can't remember stuff and i just but that's tough anyway, at a young age man it's tough at a young age bro yeah it sucked it sucked but it's, at the same time it's like i'm sure you guys have had had thoughts like people like maybe people ask you would you change anything and then it's like well obviously there's objectively shitty things that happen to everybody here but who would you have became mm-hmm. i was just going to ask you that did that did that who influence you, the way you grew yeah who would you exactly, be exactly i mean i i guess potentially but it didn't uh, like it didn't i don't know i wasn't that like i didn't become like a like a like a fucking selfless hero or anything at least when i was like a still like you're grown up though, still bro you're being you're being humble though bro i don't even think even at that age you you didn't probably realize that that made you extremely strong and i have a four-year-old daughter and she's really smart and i don't know if she could joystick somebody out like that either she, she, so yeah, that's what i mean because I, mean, I, I would play around i'd play around on her chair mm-hmm. so I, I understood how it worked and then i knew you know i knew when there was a fire you had to go get somebody exactly. i didn't know what go i think i talked on the phone too they told me i talked on the phone and I just like I didn't I didn't I didn't pass any like good intel, you know what I mean? I was just like I was just like there's a fire, in the fire. <laughs> yeah. So they were like, okay. But like, what, what happened though that you're not that you're calling your friends dad dad instead of your dad? Where's your dad at? Yeah. So the deployments and everything, like I'm not gonna. I have my own theories about everything, but point is, my dad and my mom split up. Okay. I went with my mom because, of course. You know, somebody had to take care of her. So we went living with our grandparents. Fast forward to like age age 12. My grandpa is struggling with like alcoholism. And so I'm being I'm getting mainly raised by my grandmother and my mom. My mom my mom can't really do anything. Um because her brain just isn't really there anymore. And so I'm my grandma is just like trying to take care of her husband, trying to take care of me trying to take care of her daughter. I have an uncle, my grandmother's son, who is also is, has his own demons. Like he got kicked out of the Air Force for for smoking weed um, back when he, like just like just a spark just ex- extinguished like that because of he, you know, he did something stupid once. So he's taking care. She's taking care of him. So my grandmother. The purest soul. I could possibly imagine in the entire world, like talk about a woman that every single breath that goes through her body is for other people, for other people, every single day, 
She loves and cares. She lives to serve others. Um, my grandma is, but she had her plate fucking full. And I was getting like, I was getting raised by, I didn't have any male role models in my life. So I was like a little fat kid just playing video games. I was, didn't give a shit about my studies. And this whole time, like we fast forward like 10 years, my dad is calling me. He's like, he's like, come live with me. Come live with me. Come live with me. Like, I want you to, I want to transfer custody. I want to take care of you again. So because of everything going on, we're like, too, or what? he was in, he was still in the air force. He was still in the air force and he remarried. Um, so I went to go live with them. Uh, we, we all decided it would be best because everybody had their plate full. Yep, yep. Uh, and I needed a male role model. So I went there. Um, sure. It was weird. A lot of shit. I got, I got some of that regiment, some of that discipline. A lot of shit happened over the course of that three or four years. Um, but it ended with me and my dad going, Hey, I should probably take you back to your grandparents. <laughs> uh, <Yep. laughs> so fast forwarding a lot of shit. Um, and he's like, should probably take you back to your grandparents. Went back to junior and senior year back there. And, um, I still go, I, I, I go, I go see my dad like once every six months when I'm home on leave. Um, but he just doesn't have the 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 choices that he made and the the places in life that it took him uh disabled his ability to be as present as some of us might have wanted in my life i'm sure you're saying uh, that in the nicest way possible and oh yeah sure. i can respect yeah. that you know what i'm saying yeah. and, and man that's 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 a harder situation than you you put off man that's that's not easy to deal with at a young age and i'm sure it's very confusing you know, I mean, you see all your friends with these perfect lives and then you're over here just like, what the fuck, man? Kind of got to raise yeah. yourself to a certain degree, you know, and I can respect yeah, that. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, it was just what it was just what. uh, It was just what life was. Um, I didn't. I didn't have any baseline to compare it or contrast it with anything else. So it I did get, you know, I did get melancholy I remember one of the saddest moments of my life was that day that my dad drove me back. We were in Washington state at the time when he said, probably best you go live with your grandparents. Oof. He took me back to the, he took me to the nursing home where my mom was in at the time. And he dropped me off in the parking lot. Oh. And I remember like, standing in the parking lot in between like in terms of spatially in between my my dad and my mom and they're like only like you know she's in the building he's in the car but they're only like 150 meters away from each other and i was like wow like they're like the family that we could have been this is as close as it's ever going to get 150 yeah, meters. I'm sorry, brother. It's the closest my, my mom is ever going to be to my dad. Were like, you, what was the issue with you and your dad? Was, were you giving him a hard time because you had no discipline growing up or something like that? Or was it, he was just didn't have any parenting skills because he never really had a kid uh, his whole life. No, me speaking, me speaking objectively. Um, when he got out of the mill, when he got out of the air force, he joined when he was 18 to 22 years, I believe. Hmm kind of had a midlife crisis like he didn't he he didn't know what the fuck to do we all do man. so yeah yeah, yeah. no so he <laughs> felt like he had to take care of you finally and yeah 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 Yeah. so that he that uh maybe it was a little too late that he well he just just the way that he that he took it the way that he went about it like he it affected his relationship i had half siblings at that point um his relationship with his wife. Uh, oh, you were living in the house on. with him and his new wife. In the new family. Yeah. Oh, that would be and yeah. like a couple of new siblings or what? Yeah, yeah, half. I had yeah, that new new half new half siblings. Um, um, like you got to fit in. That's like tough. Yeah, yeah, they're my little dude. You know, they're my little dudes. Like I like there. It wasn't um, from my standpoint. There wasn't much friction. It was. I was happy to have brothers and sisters. You know, I was happy to not be alone. 
in the house anymore. And to, to, what prompted it then to you? I mean, that's a big decision for your dad to be like, because he's probably talking with his wife about it. Well, no, well, he wasn't like that. Oh. So the year that he, the, the first year of him getting out of the military led to like, you know, like a, he started using substances, like started making sure. rash, rash like decisions. wild kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, rash yeah. decisions that led to friction between him and I, him and his wife, him and himself, mm -hmm. um, no which led to a spiraling of, of course, of of course, crazy, crazy fucking things that led to us, like led to me and my dad getting kicked out of the family house. Mm. to go like me just having to go like he's like well i'm taking aiden with me you know what i'm saying so i had to go with him we did that for like a couple there was like a there's like a month there's like a month we got like a one bedroom apartment and he took the bedroom so i was going to in and out i was doing my homework in the kitchen and sleeping in the kitchen um at the very beginning of my junior year and then some more shit happened um that led to us both you know in, in in much louder angrier yeah. terms like I i'm gonna go live with that. my grandparents now yeah. for sure so I that's mean, why a little bit better it, stability for you anyways it sounds like oh yeah 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 i didn't yeah that was that year fuck washington state you know what i'm saying <laughs> like, like that place just that place just freaking freaking yeah. uh sucks like i um it's 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 rainy 11 and a half months out of 12 <laughs> and no matter like what kind of person you are that just affects you of, at a certain of course point. it does of course it does so everybody everybody's always in a bad mood so like i think i don't know maybe that had something to do with it but i just don't like that place at all <laughs> so when but, you did, uh, so then you did uh you graduated high school and then you joined right away or you uh went, no how long was so it there was a, i took to that so I, yeah so i graduated high school there was like a month of me trying to figure out where to live, talk to my friend. Um, it, it moved out. And then there was like six months of me just like going to parties. Fucking. <laughs> There's my roommate back there. There's another machine gunner. Um, fucking. I'm on, I'm, I'm on a podcast. Take it easy. Flex. Yeah, he gave me the thumbs up. The motherfucker's huge. Um, Happened in Japan. Yeah, yeah. After it. We were both um, been there. Yeah, yeah. There's that. There's that six months of me just kind of drinking for the for, like fucking around, partying, kind of like ah, doing what a lot of a lot of people my age spent four years doing. Yeah, for sure. Um, just not knowing who they were. Had that talk, right? The talk about I don't think yep. you want to be an actor right now. Went, okay. Went downstairs. Came back upstairs. I'm like, John, I need, you, I need you to take me to this guy. Walked in there. I went, I want to be a machine gunner. I want to enlist and I want to go right now. And he went, what the fuck? What are you running away from right now? <laughs> who's behind you? Yeah. Who's behind you? Who's, who's like, this isn't how this works. So the like, shit what out do you of mean? Like, yeah, I was like, I want to go right now. And he I want to be a machine you know, gunner. Man. I thought that's how it worked. Um. But yeah, then I, after that, I just went, I was like, I was thinking, I was like, if I had done everything else in my life, say I became an actor, got, did music, got an Oscar, was in like some, some movies, like had a positive change, what I, I feel like on the world, you know, used, used my money, my influence for, 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 for good. Yeah. If I did everything, had a family, had a badass family, you know, um, everything else in my life, what would I have regret not doing? Serving my country. A hundred percent. So I was like, well, seems like a good time to get that shit out of the way. And I was like, who, who am I going to do with fucking Marines? I, I didn't know. I didn't even know. I just knew because of like, I just knew. Like, I just knew. I was like, if I'm going to join, like, it's going to be the fucking, it's going to be the Marines. It's like, weird. It's weird it. because, like, your story correlates a lot with his. And I have similar things that correlate with some things that you said. But it's almost like you see a pattern of who joins the Marines. 
it's, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> not even Marines, really do the military in general, but yeah. yeah. The Marines, I was making a joke. I was making a joke at the chow hall yesterday because somebody I said something. I made some sort of joke about how like like I don't like my dad isn't a huge part of my life. And then some guy at the table was like, was like, oh really? He was like, it's like, wow, like that's very serious. What happened? And I was like, like, oh my God, the fucking the infantry marine doesn't have a great home life. Who would have fucking guessed? <laughs> who would have guessed? Who, who would have known? Facts. Who would have known that that guy was trying to get away from something? Facts. For sure. That's where they <laughs> put like, all the dogs at. You ever, yeah, you ever meet like a fucking marine or a sailor where you just like, he's like, yeah, both my parents are still married. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's no. not, it just doesn't happen. I don't even know. I've never I smoked know. a cigarette. Never know. had a dip. Nope. Facts. Facts. So you, were you in guys are... during COVID? Yeah. So I just, yeah. yeah so I. Different. My I, my ship date to Paris Island was delayed by a month because they stopped. There just wasn't any new dudes coming in for for a month. And I remember thinking, I was like, this is probably the first time. Mm-hmm. It's probably the first time in history that Paris Island has been shut down mm-hmm. for probably. like an extended period of time. I was like, I was like, I was like, this is putting us in danger. Like, what if somebody wants to fuck with us right now? We don't got new fucking recruits. Hey, coming that's out. true. Oh, it's yeah. not where to start. I was like, yeah, I kind of, yeah, I kind of had like, I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be the fucking first one in, you know, start it back up again. <laughs> gonna let them know, hey, we got new, <laughs> we got new dudes, just fucking walking yeah. that tightrope. I was, ex- I was excited, but yeah, that sucked having to run around, having to get it'd with the mask on. Are you serious, Fuck that dude? Yeah, you're getting waterboarded, man. <laughs> that shit sucked. <laughs> That shit sucked. You can't like you're like you're just like he's like open up your fucking face and you're you're, you're you're screaming. Yeah, you're screaming, and then the the wet sweaty mask oh, is going yeah. in your mouth, and you're like, Ugh. like you can't do it, dude. That's so dumb. You can't do it. That shit. That's Wait, did the drill, did the drill instructors wear them? Sometimes when they had to. Yeah. So it was all just a bunch of. Yeah, it was just a bunch it's of different. muffled screaming. That's all I remember of boot camp is just muffled screaming. That was okay. it, dude. And then and some guys in the some guy, I think some guys in another like follow series or something. Somebody like two dudes got caught fucking in the rain room. Stop by it by the by the fire watch. Stop yeah, it. Yeah, because there there are dudes that are there for like a year, being a recruit for a year. You can't oh, say like, me. like a like a broke dick or something. Yeah, broke dick or like a I don't know, like a just a bitch. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. just like yep. they just can't fucking figure it out and yeah. they're not yeah, they can't give justification to go home like they have toxic said, motherfuckers. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they so they have it, you know, you can't say me, you can't no porn or a whole year. It's like, yeah, <laughs> you start getting creative. He's like, yeah, no, I think I'm gonna fucking I don't know what to do fucking with fucking my hands. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I bet. I heard I don't know if this is true. I know the other thing is true, but I heard that after they got caught and they got in trouble, I heard that one of them fought the other. Well, it's like a little lover's quarrel. Oh, that's so <laughs> weird. That's so weird. <laughs> they were like, they're like, fuck you, man. This is your fault. We got caught. And he was like, he's like, Well, it's not my fault that you take forever to come, you know. It's like stop it, stop it, (laughs) stop it. That's not hard to kill, man. (laughs) That's not hard to kill. That's pretty easy to kill, dude. You can't talk about easy to kill shit on the podcast. Oh man, there's always some weird boot. Wait, so is that is that you see that a lot now in the marine? Is there a lot of like openly weird shit? I mean, look at the world right now, dude. Oh no, there's no no, there's no. That was the only like. Straight up, we're always joking about it, but there's that's that's the only time there was like straight up homosexual activity, like <laughs> like actually going down. I don't know, I don't know what people keep behind, you know, people keeping their fucking wall locker, but that's the only time that I somebody actually put their foot down and like went condition one in the oh. whole gay operation. Oh boy! So I don't. uh No, I I'd say it's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty normal. We have we have like there's women now, we have women, like in the infantry. Uh, well, really, yeah, like yeah. A, yeah, there's a couple. How, now, tell me about talk to me about that. <laughs> hey, let's hear let's hear about that. Let's give me your feel? take. Come on, hard to kill. Yeah, it's, or a hot, kill or no? it's a hot, it's a hot topic. To be PC. <laughs> they do. I the ones that I like. It's a mixed bag, just like dudes. 
Just like guys. Yeah, like yeah, you just you. You, you have plenty of guys that, you know, might as well be fucking no, you know, like trust they, me. They, they're we, we had they our suck. Yeah, exactly. We had so, lionesses. I mean, it was just they didn't start in the infantry, but they're basically infantry when we were in Afghanistan. Yeah. 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 No, they're I I have met I have met some some very like stereotypical, like what you would joke about and imagine, kind of like that's how they actually conducted themselves stories. And I, I you know, there's there's ones that like actually, you know, fucking get after it. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Our dogs. Yep. So it's surprising. But like, yeah, if you if you are get, like there's so much if if you're if you're really so narrow visioned that you refuse to see the gray in any one topic, like you're a fucking idiot. If you're just gonna flat out come out and say it's hey, like, no fucking way. Let's be real. There's a lot of them in the Marine Corps, bro. Yeah. yeah. A lot of them in yeah. Life. So politics and it, religion all the time. Yeah, if they, I obviously don't agree with the standard being changed. You know, a standard is a standard is a standard. Um, and that should stay in stone. But if if you can fucking dude, if you can hang, yeah. if you can hang with the gents, like hey, there's some come on out. I don't see, I don't see fucking any grow a stash. Imagine. Yeah, I'll be straight. Yeah. Grow a stash. Get a no shave <laughs> shit. Come on over. No, I bet you there's like, some of the girly ones that still kill though. I mean, you know, there's some athletic girls out there. Yeah, That's, like yeah, like they, they're fucking like there's definitely yeah, to be you to, have a to, girl. To just, so if a girl's in infantry, she's living in the barracks with you guys, or she's in her own girls' barracks. She's in her. I mean, she gets her own room. Own maybe room, maybe with another girl. With the unit, right? Oh, there might be two. There might but, be two. Because uh, usually this but unit's in the same barracks, like. Yeah. Um, so there's no. There's not a separate barracks. They just get their own room. Interesting. Huh. So then the only the only it wasn't the only like real gross. change. Girls yeah, definitely not. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They they just get their own room and the only real change is like like I guess like don't be running like don't be streaking around the halls of the barracks because you might get a charge now, you know, <laughs> if you fucking you re- accidentally bump into her like, oh shit. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Sorry. Like I said, I don't know. Like you can't that's Whoops. kind of the only that's the only thing that's different is that you can't like I guess you'll get in trouble if you're just like running around in your chonies and you know that you have a woman in the barracks, but gotcha. Mm-hmm. No, nothing else. Nothing else different really occurs. Like it just, you really okay. get. It's let's, really a non-factor. Like it's just another O three eleven. Okay, let's let's transition a little bit. So, we get through boot camp, uh, get through ITB. Uh, first unit. Where we at? Well, so I showed up, and they were all at Bridgeport and ITX, and we got told like we got told in ITB like. Like two two is going to Bridgeport and ITX. Yeah, okay. like you guys are gonna get to the fleet, and you guys are gonna pull your if, and you're gonna go right to. They, they did Bridgeport and ITX back to back, not oh. coming back or anything, back to back. So they're like, you guys are gonna go, like you guys are gonna fucking kill yourself. That's one of the one of the, one of my combat instructors told me. He was like, you guys should probably kill yourself because you're gonna get, but fu- you're gonna get fucking destroyed, out in out in Bridgeport in itx that's the first place you're gonna meet your squad leader no way like <laughs> you need to like hurt your knee or something time right. now <laughs> and we we're just like like i thought like i just thought like the mo- like you know like all i had was like the movies i didn't have any anybody like any family friends like uncle johnny he was a fucking job i had back no, in 89 I, like, I, I didn't have any of that so i just thought i just had the movies so i was opening my door like fast like for the first three months i was opening my door like this because i thought that you got like you got jumped like you got initiated <laughs> like i thought it was like a gang and like and then how you like hey, that's that what shit I, used that's to what happen that shit saying. used to happen dude that's what we kept saying like we get like you're gonna get jumped and if you act like a pussy when you get jumped then that's then you're gonna be a bitch forever and if yeah. you act like if you don't act like a bitch when you get jumped then that's how like that's how you, they determine like who's the group leader you know <laughs> so i was like like ready just a little like a little scared <laughs> kid and then um yeah i remember my but what ended up happening is we got there and like the manifest and the rosters already filled out so we couldn't co- go with them so we spent two months Waiting. alone 
yeah waiting for those guys to standing by back. in japan yeah, that um no in lejeune, uh, lejeune so. yeah in lejeune so yeah yeah it's like what's it's like what's worse camp what seriously lejeune, doing i don't know mm. i couldn't tell you that shit is that shit is bad eerily um, similar <laughs> Eerily similar. Yeah, well, at least uh, I can drink the water here. Yeah. So maybe, good. maybe. Yeah, Jesus how long? Christ. Exactly. Who knows? Um, but yeah, while we were, there was uh, two other people that didn't go that stayed back from Bridgeport. It was my first section leader and my first squad leader who were going to advanced school, and when they came back, like the day that the day before they graduated, Ad- advanced machine gunners course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the day before they graduated, they they got they got three of us, me and two of my fucking little bootski amigos, and they're like they're like stand by in Antrim's room. And I'm like shit. This <laughs> like this is fucking it. There's three of us. I don't know how many of them there are. Um. So like here fucking, it comes. My boy Bowden. He's like he's like I'm from the fucking 305, bro. Fucking Miami, bro. We're going down, bro. This is it, bro. That's how he talks. That's the best impression you've ever heard of anybody ever. That was 100% accurate. Dre used to talk um, about that. Yeah, he's a fucking... Facts. Not, he will not shut up about how he's fucking... Three old fucking five, bro. <laughs> but he... We got there, and dude, my, my first squad leader, Corporal Turner. Turner is a... That is like what you think of when you think of a machine gunner. Okay. He's a big, bus-cutted, mustached brute fucking dude he's a big he's a big guy ground came in and then yeah yeah and then all those thoughts of fucking surviving the jumping like just left my mind um, <laughs> but we didn't get jumped they had a stern conversation with us yep. laying out like what we needed to do while that's it that's an important time right there bro that's oh that's yeah where you realize like what what it's gonna be like you know how i'm gonna live you know yeah they like, like laid down the fucking Here's what we need, like, need you guys to be proficient in by the time that we come back, like, blah, 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 blah. Like, we're going to fuck you up if you don't know, like, your stuff. Yep. It's like, writing it down in the fucking ride in the rain. <laughs> Bust out your ride in the rain. Write it down. Um, But, yeah, that was, yeah. Like, I, I kind of, I, I had, like, a, a kind of sped run, sped, sped run. You could call it a sped run, but speed ran the whole being a boot thing unfairly because i joined right before like i came right before deployment so we went on deployment and then it was kind of the, uh, the covid deployment we didn't really do anything we shot machine guns one time we shot so i was nine i was nine months in the fleet coming back from my first deployment i shot a machine gun in the fleet once where were you guys deployed? So, okay right okay yeah, yeah. You know, the Yoki, oh. and then we went to mainland to do some exercises. Wait, you were so you were with the unit. Were you were after Lejeune, you went to a unit where in the Japan? Two, two. No, I went to two two station in Camp Lejeune after ITB. And then they went on like that was that. Something or what kind of deployment? No, I went on a UDP to Camp Schwab. UDP, UDP, six months. Gotcha. Came back. Uh, and you're a lance corporal went, at this time. Coming back from deployment, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then I and then I was getting ready for getting ready for advanced school. All that's all I'm hearing about the whole time being a boot. It's because that that's all we have. Of course. Like you guys like that's your varsity jacket all, right there as a machine gunner. That's that's all that we have now. We don't have I know I'm trying not to laugh. Yeah, it sucks yeah, though. We we, we talked we talked when you first got on here, man. You don't have Yeah. Fucking no, we don't have fucking Haiti. We don't have a humanitarian ribbon. We don't have we don't have Helmand. You like, we don't, that's bro, you all, all that we have. You gotta understand when we were in, dude, the feeling of deploying to the most dangerous area in the world is just this, this, you, you get ready. I mean, Dre, we, we were slain, like we were, looked like Greek gods. We knew every weapon system, dude, you get, yeah. you get this feeling of just satisfaction a fucking, of a fucking healer. I'm just yeah, ready. Yeah, you I'm ready know. to go. You already know. Like talk about like, you say like, me like we've all had very sort of similar backstories like like what did we what did we do when like in making this decision that we made we were looking 
for a purpose. We of wanted course, a purpose. Of course, we of course. wanted to have something in our lives that was really ours. And it, like, maybe we spent like a lot of our childhoods, a lot of our adolescence feeling like we didn't have any control. We didn't have any control over the path. We Things just happened to us and we got to take it back. We got to become, you know, these fucking war fighters. And then like you guys actually going, like I was excited to be on the practice squad <laughs> like being a pulley like i was just like like yeah i'm gonna be ready as fuck for war but you guys like getting ready like talk about a purpose like personified the focus like the focus that you must have had as a as a unit as a collective like the 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 the, the drive that everybody must must have had to fucking that's you, I mean, you, you kind of hit it right there dude because that's almost like one of the biggest problems when you get out uh, you you, not don't have, you don't have that purpose anymore, you know, and it's just like no uh, camaraderie. You can be. No you fucking... just need to make the right steps. When yeah, you no, out. you're right. Yeah. There's some strong moves. Like you can get right back into working for the government as a GS. You'll make way more money, and you'll still be in charge of like some kind of important system or some kind of important program within the government. And so, as long as you guide yourself the right direction, and honestly, like let me just tell you, bro, as I'm 37. I have three kids. My oldest is about to be eight. Um, I did three tours. I would never, ever, 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 ever allow my kids to join any combat position in the military. Like you're just I've I've told them, like, you know, if I've let them know, like, you know, the military is an option for you guys, but you're gonna go learn a, a different job. You're not gonna do combat like daddy. Because I'm telling you, it really fucks you up like big time and it does it's designed really to fuck up the bravest fearless leaders that we have in our society because now we get the betas to run because the alphas are broken and they're carrying around these heavy weights for 5 10 15 years or whatever i mean your dad was victim to that and it's not just like it's not even like a combat thing either it's like an identity thing and you mentioned it but i'll tell you right now dude don't put so much into that identity because Ultimately, your purpose in your life, you'll make it when you get out. And it's most likely going to be your family, especially if you had a sense of brokenness in your family like I did. I know that's always been my ultimate, ultimate, ultimate goal. Obviously, you want to serve my country. I'm there for my brothers, you know, simplify. But ultimate, ultimate, it's my family first. And so don't put too much stock into that identity because once you get out, it's harder to rearrange and reprocess. Yeah, and sure. honestly, like the military could be one or two experiences. It could be actually on my Twitter, Forever Contrarian, uh, I have on my pin, it's uh, combat changes, some for the better and most for the worst. So the military can be something that really fucks you up, which I'm telling you, I have cats. I'm wearing my captain who ended up offing himself after a couple of years just because he couldn't deal with it anymore. So it it really does mess you up if you didn't lose a leg. I mean, I'm having multiple surgeries still on, on uh, my injured knee. And so, like, there's just all this that comes with it that, honestly, it is not even worth it. Like, you can <laughs> go be that alpha. You can go be that dog in some sort of other avenue, like nonviolent avenue. Which, to be honest, and if you look at history, you can like back this up empirically, that nonviolent movements actually win. Violence never actually wins. So it's tight to be like, I have a big dick. I'm tough. I'm a warfighter. I'm not going to lie. That's tight. But that's really just all ego. And the, the older you get and the more you start getting in tune with just the different layers of reality that you start to experience, the older you get, you will start to realize like, Bro, he hasn't even Ego broke. Doesn't he, matter. he hasn't even bro. broke that yet. He's still in year For one. Sure. No, you remember? I used to always tell them, bro, because yeah. I was a little bit older than all them, and and I'm, of course I'm the doc, so I'm like a little bit smarter. You know, my fucking here he ass goes, here he goes, and shit, and just that's a fact. Like, go look at the ASVAB test, like. But I used to always tell them, I used to always be like, oh, you guys don't understand. Because they'd be like, why are you making this decision? Because I was making like a responsible decision or something, right? Like they want to go get fucked up or bone all kinds of hookers or something, and I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, you You don't get it because you're not 24. And grown that was man. a joke. <laughs> a grown-ass man. Grown yeah. ass man. It was like an inside joke inside of our unit. It was like, 24, <laughs> 24, grown-ass man. Because I would always tell him, I'd be like, you guys don't understand. And 
honestly, obviously I'm 37 now, but looking back at that, I, I didn't know shit, even though I was 24, but it was still referencing like this concept that exists. Like the older you get, you start to like break away from ego yeah. and like, think about how many layers of reality are put onto us that makes us become who we are, our personalities. But ultimately the purpose of life, at least in my opinion, and this is subjective, obviously, but the purpose of life is to be the version of you that you are. But that takes removal of layers off. Which is hard. I grew up with complex PTSD trauma. I was born into trauma. I was kidnapped. I have so many sh bad stories with my... with and my Really kidnapped, bro. He was on a milk carton. Yes, but like that Fuck. made me a certain person where I didn't like other people or, you know, it made me function a certain way. So growing up, it made me a certain individual. But the older I've gotten... The further away from those events I've I've gotten, it you start to realize and you start to think like, well, hold up, that's not really who I want to be, and so you have to like change your ways and stuff because you're starting to figure out who you really are, not who somebody programmed you to be in a sense because it's not even a programming, but like you just pick it up as you go. Yep. Is it, isn't it up. trippy how when you just said that you you got back and you realized certain things, how certain events make you act a certain way. You don't even realize it at the time because you're so young. You don't realize what's happening. But like, just as you said, when self-realization comes in, you're like, oh, shit, what, what was I doing that whole time? Why, why was I doing this? And it's, I mean, you're, what are you, year four or year three? Year three and a half. Year three and a half. Okay. You're planning on staying in for a long yeah, time? Yeah, what's, what's the move? No, so I, I, and ever since I, I went to, over last Christmas leave, my uh, my my grandmother, the angel, uh, she got diagnosed with stage four uterine cancer. And hearing that made me feel greatly compelled to return mm -hmm. like geographically home. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that was I could feel that pulling at me. And Where's then, she at? Oregon. Oregon, my my mo my mother and my grandparents live in Oregon. That's where I've spent the most time. Uh, but beautiful there. Yeah. Oh my god. So what do you uh, have like a year left in on your contract? No, I so I, I get out. I'm supposed to get out in 420, 2024. Right. That was my EAS. Yeah, you can imagine what I was going to be doing. Uh -huh. Um, but so I felt. Like my whole plan from when I went in there and I was like, I want to be a machine gunner. I want to go now. Blah, 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 blah. My plan was to uh, make some stories, like grow up, you know, mature as a man, learn what it means to act selflessly and lead. I, w I wanted that. I wanted to know what that meant. Can we, can we, can we pause for one second? When you say lead. Tell, open up on that a little bit. What give me tell me how what does leadership mean to you? What 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 does that mean? Leadership is the art of getting people to do what you want because they want to do it. Leadership is Showing somebody what what they want to be, what what they need to be, it's 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 living as that 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 I guess that mentor, that example, always being that that grounding example of what like what right is supposed to look like. I can understand and. That. Now, the, the reason why I ask you that is because anytime I talk to like a, you know, a corporal or a lance corporal nowadays, I always hear that, you know, they have a problem with leadership. They're, a big problem is with their senior leadership. And, you know, I and you told me that you were in a position where you were a platoon sergeant for a little bit. So you got the feel of maybe getting word passed down to you and talking to your Marines and, you know, telling them what to do and having, you know, the burden of command for a little bit, if you will. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, to me, honestly, I, I always think of bad examples of leadership when I was in and how it affected me. And I would always try to just not do that to a certain degree whenever I was in a leadership position. But I don't know, to me, I, I feel like you have to be in a lot of positions where there's bad leadership to know not what to do, kind of. Yeah, that's what I, not even just in the military, but in life, um, be thankful for your bad examples, just as thankful as you are for the good ones. It's not, there's some situations where knowing what not to do Yes. Could be even more valuable than knowing exactly. what to do. Exactly. Um, Experience to a certain degree. Yeah. But we all, you know, we all take take the good from the good and take the bad from the bad. But uh, it's hard because the main thing that I see in the transition from like being an NCO to being a staff NCO is for most people, now you have the goal is to keep politics out of all of this shit. I don't mean the podcast, but I mean, out of war fighting, of course, like on why we fight is because of politics, because of failed bureaucracy, but we keep, we shield them and hopefully the organization as a whole from that bullshit. We just focus on the tangibles. Yeah, exactly. What we need to do. That won't help change anything. You know, Smedley Butler, I'm sure. Of course. He, he was very politically active. Uh, you know, obviously there's a certain extent that you can't because of your active duty status. But even if you're just taking notes and you don't say anything the whole time and you get out, just aware. Yeah. you have something to say because um, the biggest resource hogger, because any, you ever played Sims or one of those games on your phone where you build your community you build your town you build your city whatever it is you need resources to build and the biggest value for any country is resources so the number one place where our resources go is actually inside of the department of defense Facts. and it's about 55 percent of that you can go look on these numbers but 55 percent of that budget is going to the private corporations that make the weapons the missiles the bombs the machine guns you're using womp, the marines womp. don't the Marines didn't make those guns, no. unfortunately. You know, those guns were made for by a company, and that company made it at $30 and sold it to the Marine Corps for $3,000. Just, just throwing numbers around. It's, you know, there's a profit margin, though. There's a big and disparity. And yeah. these are private companies. So ultimately, what's happening here, and this is going to change our whole entire conversation, Um. But I think you're going to be great at being an actor too. I think you have. Max, like, I was going to say that as well. Pauses and like you, you very. <laughs> I got the face, he's got the face for it. Yeah, leadership <laughs> too, bro. But like you, I appreciate take command it. of this the time when it's on you, and I think you're going to do great, bro. I think you need people like us uh, to help guide you. And Max. I had if I had some options, bro, I'll tell you some chess move plays that I had to learn and mess up on but i can pass it on to other cats like there's some big moves you can play before you get out and when you get out to secure yourself oh yeah jobs because it's hard getting a job after infantry yeah, my definitely. resume is like emergency medicine <laughs> expert rifle qual exactly warfare training, machine gunner course advanced machine gunner force j dub so here's bridge port they're just laughing yeah yeah here's what i can bring to the management of this office depot <laughs> I laugh every time I see cold weather training Bridgeport on my resume because I'm like, if you only knew what it took to put that fucking one line on the Facts. resume, Facts. you know how much no, cold my nuts were. Like, oh, all the, yeah. God. All the shit that you guys have to fucking do. All the shit that you guys have to memorize to get your pen. Oh, yeah. Nuts. Sure. I love true. I love when they come in every time they're doing a board to come in and answer like, hey, what's the um, what's the uh, the max effective of <laughs> like the 1911 yeah they're like tell me about the 240 like but what before the gulf like they're outdated as shit there's like it says on the fmf book it says like the m9 is like 19 inches long or some shit like that it's ridiculous it, they just come in yeah, and they're yeah, at like yeah. hey can you quiz me on when the ega was made like, What's crazy? Oh, i bet you if we looked it up i bet you the way to change it is it's probably some kind of like the government would have to put in some kind of like rfq 
which is like requesting for um, services or something to even get a change and have to like pay a grip of money to get a change. Like our yeah, system, like, all the money like, play, all the money play. Yeah. Our yeah. system is a scam, bro. I'm yeah, telling no, you it right is. now, besides Don't get them going. we lie in ourselves into war, besides we coup other democratically elected countries and complain about our own democracy. <laughs> besides all that, the money being spent is not smart. There's a great video by Johnny Harris. He does a lot of deep dives on YouTube, but he has one about who got rich in Afghanistan. And it starts that off. Was so at, good. It starts in like 2002, you know, it was 2001 where towers got hit and um, America had started ramping up a double narrative. That's why if you ask most people, why did we go to Iraq? Ask most people and they'll say it was because of 9-11. Yeah. Which is of false. Yeah. To go get al- yeah, to go wrong. get Al Qaeda, who wasn't it was there. WMD. To go get yeah, WMDs, WMDs that weren't Weapons there. Mass destruction in Saudi Saddam Hussein. There's other, you know, political issues underlining where you know he was working with Gaddafi to get the gold standard back and to get everybody Man, there, that's uh, deep. in the OPEC and in the oil world to get them off of the petrodollar, which is this ability that the United States has uniquely with the reserve currency to have all the oil in the world tra- traded in dollars. Yep. So what it does is it helps keep money and dollars in circulation. So yep. when we print millions and millions of dollars, it doesn't really hit like it should because you have all these dollars in circulation because the countries have to use the dollar because it's a reserve currency. And there's like even a certain amount of money you have to have in your central banks to even be part of this. So like if you're a country and you're purchasing millions of dollars of barrels every day of oil, this is like a very complex system and the US dollar has hegemony on it and unfortunately you know Saudi Arabia I mean uh, Saddam Hussein and Gaddafi were plotting in the background really trying to use chess moves in the Middle East and yeah it's just chess moves the United States was like nah we're not gonna have that bro we got too much power and you know we're too good at propagandizing our you know sixth grade reading level average American mm-hmm. uh, so, uh, so tell me Tell me this, Corporal. Um, Force Design 2030 has came up a little bit. Um, I don't know how this has affected you, but when it comes down to it, it's almost, I'd like to say it's geared towards China, the possibility of going to China. Um, 100%, at least in near peer. Yeah. Now, now to, to, knowing that, I mean, the biggest thing is to mature our forces I mean, how are we? It's it's a it's a brand new way to fight. I mean, we're we're over. We've been in Afghanistan, Iraq. We haven't done island hopping in. I mean, what since the Philippines or? We just built three new bases in the Philippines too. Actually, getting ready for um, whatever they want to start with China. But I guess I guess the big deal though is is retention. All these staff NCOs that we need to lead these guys are get you know they're getting out, especially. I mean, in the various MOSs that are that that need, you know, to move all this stuff. Now, I mean, you just told us that you're probably getting out. I mean, and from all appearances, just from talking to you, I can tell you're a good to go, dude. Now, what what, what would you give us? Give us your opinion on why these these staff NCOs or salty corporals or salty sergeants, you know, are getting out. So to clarify, I my plan was was to get out up until like a year ago, up until like the grandma thing. And um, I realized I wasn't content with my service as well. Like I want to be closer to home. Two things. I want to be closer to home. Like I need to take care of my grandma and my mom. And I'm not content. I feel like I have more to give. I feel like I have more. I feel like I have this youth, this health in a good mind, I I don't think I am prepared as I need to be to just, yeah, I'm getting out, I'm getting out. Those dudes that they have, they have, as soon as they have 364 days left on contract, they're like, yeah, I'm getting out soon. So, you know, whatever. Like, they're like, they're like, why do I need to go to that training? I'm getting out. It's like, yeah, dude, in a year and a half, man, get your flack. <laughs> but, uh, fucking, I, 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 my plan was the EAS, smoke a joint and then put everything into my car and move and and drive to Los Angeles and be homeless until <laughs> like fucking Sylvester. Yeah, Stallone. Apparently that's the move right now, dude. It's... Well, there's like, there's so many <laughs> fucking idiots just like me that have done the exact same thing. And there's no, like, 
I'm not, I'm a first generation like guy trying to get into that. Like I have no connections. I know nobody. So I would just be fucking walking around and it's just the, the, the closer I got to EAS, the more that that seemed like the ideas of a immature kid. And I was like, I have more to, I have more to give. I need to take care of my family. Um, so putting myself in a situation where I'm incomeless, um, in LA, 18 hours away from home, um, didn't like, what if something happened to my grandma? What yeah, if something yeah. happened to my mom? I don't think this is the time. Just like the conversation I had with my father figure, you know, when I was 18, I don't think that this is the time. I think it will become very apparent. Um, and that's not to say I'm going to just sit here and wait. Um, this is this is a lot of going into answering your question about Forces Sign 2030, but it all makes sense in the end. Um, but anyway, combination of all those things. Uh, after I went to ISOLC uh, earlier this year in spring, and being around those guys and the instructor cadre, I was like, being around dudes like real, yeah, yeah, yeah. squared away fucking profession professionals in this job makes me re remember again how much I love doing this. And I was like, I'm still young, so I it, earlier in the spring I started my process for an inter service transfer to the army because I want to be a ranger. Really, I'm trying to go 75th Ranger Regiment. Um, Ooh. do that. Do that for four. Did you say who? 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 Yep. Who? Yeah. Who? That's. I, I can't wait. Yeah. You're gonna need my Rangers on the five yard line. That's this is my bro. safety, sir. It so none of that really matters what color your uniform is, bro. Yeah. It just yeah. Matters yeah I just what you do, and that, that sounds like over family first. Yeah. And, you know, if I go to first. second second Ranger bat, I'll be at that base where my house burned down in Washington State, two hours away from my mom and my grandma, and so I can. Can you? I just started going to school. Just started doing TA. Um, been going to college, so I can get my bachelor's by the time that I'm out, Smart and then move. get my master's master's in acting using my GI Bill after I get out of the military. But I I, I should have been doing that the whole time. Is what I realized. I should have been doing that the whole fucking time. I could have done that as a PSC. Japan. Especially in yeah. Japan. That's yeah. all. I mean, your your military career could be either two things. One, it fucks you up, or two, it yeah. really is like a stepping stone to a bright, successful future. And you just have to make the right move. So definitely doing what you want to do to make sure that you're staying in. Cause a lot of people, they might just be like, Oh, I'm going to stay in. And then they're not actually happy. At least you could still stay in and be happy with this move. Facts. So that's yeah. a move for sure. And definitely get your degree. You know, I mean, you want to do the acting. So, you know, get your bachelor's degree and maybe, I don't know, film study or something like that. What are you studying for your bachelor's right now? Kind communications. Of communications so after after i realized because mo in our jst i'm actually because of like advanced school corporal scores boot camp i sulk um i'm actually like halfway towards getting a communication a bachelor in communications degree already just mm -hmm. off, off of credits because so many of them carry really? over because a lot of it is like like leadership that's awesome. business management like a lot of it applies to that career field and then after i realized my master's didn't have to be what in what my bachelor's was in mm -hmm. i'm like well let me use like let me be efficient with my time uh get a bachelor of communications degree which is more generally applicable it's a very general kind of abstract degree like there's no one career field that it gets you in but it, it could be potentially applied to a great deal because it's just like about enhancing and augmenting your ability to communicate with people regardless of background or status so with that like that could help me in the military as well um so get my bachelor in a a general like kind of multi-tool sort of degree and then use that solid gpa in my gi bill to potentially get into a very you know a, a damn good school for getting just getting my my mfa about acting and the main thing that i would be pursuing there is the community the uh, connections that i would get that'd be how the most are valuable you? thing huh? how, tall are you? how tall are you like five like five eight i feel you i just ask because i think um usually most actors not most but i think, taller shit 
They're usually taller. Yeah, they're like six foot and something. Jonah Hill, Tom, bro. Tom, Tom, Cru- Tom Cruise is like five, five. Here we go. There it is. But yeah. he's also a Scientologist. And most of his videos are so, produced so by crazy. Scientologists. Yeah. And, that guy is crazy. Scientologists have their own production company. And thinking so like, Scientology, maybe. <laughs> maybe getting into Scientology. Maybe that's the move they need to make. Yeah. No, bro. But, you just the communications was was a solid move, but like yeah. you can always do acting without having to waste your GI bill on acting because whatever you get a job in, like I mean, there's right now you can go on usajobs.com or usajobs.gov and see different jobs that the government offers, but there are a ton of remote jobs, literal remote jobs, and so like if you had a yeah, remote yeah. job, like voice acting. Just remote some job like like doing some kind of whatever they have you do. Like maybe you, your communication. So your job is to like do social media or something like that for some kind of department. And while you're doing that remotely, then you're acting in your in IRL, you know, going to the because really the way I live in San Diego. So I'm pretty close to it. My son was actually a Nike model. He my wife put him into modeling pretty young and he actually got on Nike. They paid him. A couple thousand dollars. He's on the websites and stuff. He has that curly hair and he's like a mixed kid, so it's like the look. But yeah, he's good. Really, he's good to what, go. What you first do is you first just start showing up to um like calls. So like they'll just like have, you know, uh, casting calls. All the actors, yeah, casting calls, and you just do those. Like there's just a lot over here. There's there's all the time, and so you just go to those, go to those, go to those, and before you know it, you start getting some IMBD credits. You start getting to know people in there. And then you slide into something else, you slide into something else, and then, you know, Net, go network, network, baby, network. You could definitely yeah, use man. college to get in there. But personally, if you want fa- a family, dude, I'm telling you right now, I wrote a book. My first book that I wrote, it is called, it's on Amazon. It's called Freelance to Fortune, how to use the internet and technology to help you make a business and to freelance on the side. And so, because I started my own Amazon company, pretty successful Amazon business. And yes, you did. Product company. Oh, yeah. And um, it's been great. We've so done, awesome to hear about veterans just getting out and then just getting after it and then just fucking. A ton of resources he's a beast, bro. Beast. Yeah. Well, there's a ton of resources out there, and if I didn't have the VA holding my hand in the very beginning, um, I definitely wouldn't have been this far. So there's a tons of resources out there, and I always tell people you can go on my website on uh, www.warriorclass.com and sign up there. I'll help you out do whatever. But um, you know, th- you could make some moves that put you in a position that I'm telling you, like. Even myself. So I got out, got a couple of jobs. I got my bachelor's degree. I got my master's degree. And then I really didn't want to do it. My master's degree. I got an education. I didn't really like being at the school because all the teachers were telling me like, eh, you shouldn't tell the students to question things so much, you know, because I'm always coming at things from questioning perspective. And so I was like, really didn't want to do that. So I did the entrepreneurial thing. Way to be. Critical thinker, sure. baby. For sure. But it's hard to be in a union that, you know, they have Facts. a lot of power over who's in charge. Yeah. And people have been there for like 20, 25 years. They don't want new ways and new kind of things. It's uncomfortable no. for them. They don't so, want to answer those hard questions. Most yeah. people are not um, going to come, you know, just be OK with that in the beginning. So my point is, is entrepreneuring went well. I even started a little side tech company um, to do a, kind of what I did with our e-commerce company, you know, just like get it out there, get it known for other companies. But sometimes you're not in control of the market. And if you studied anything about economics, you know, about capitalism it has some great things about it and also has some flaws. And one of those flaws is it goes up and down. It's, you know, it's like a seven to 10 year up and down. You can go look at the market. You can go look at the housing data. You'll see these little blips. It's just what happens in capitalism. And so we're in that right now, actually, as we speak. And so our sales, we've done 4 million in revenue since 2019 and our sales right now are about like 70% down. So as somebody that it has three kids and a wife and I live in San Diego, I drive a nice car, I have a nice house. So it's an expensive lifestyle, like really expensive. And so I have to be thinking about like, okay, well, how can I have provide for my family? And like the main thing that, that I'm starting to realize as I get older is I need stability. I need manageability. I need to be able to manage my life i need stability and really a lot a lot of these things that i'm doing like these side entrepreneuring things i could do them on the side of a government job mm. so i'm actually in pursuit right now of going back to voc rehab it's an it's another resource that you have when you get out after you use your gi bill don't use all your gi bill if you're watching out there save one day of your gi bill and it'll get you that bah that's fire your voc yeah. rehab um, but you, the voc rehab will pay for me to go to school again or, or to put me into some of these jobs. And so 
I can literally run my e-commerce business. I can run my tech company because I have a couple of uh, virtual assistant people that I've been working with for years that are from overseas and I pay them, you know, what they ask for in their salary. And it's not a lot. And I can dictate to them still to run these companies while I have a government job still in the day. And it sounds crazy, but to live in San Diego and some of these other places and, you know, everywhere is really, it just seems like it's going up. It's necessary, especially if you have, you know, more than one mouth to feed. So I would think about as a young, as a young buck like you, I would definitely advise you to think about um, having something solid, like the communications degree, super solid. Then maybe in your master's, you go to master master's degree and you specialize in something in communications. Maybe you specialize in some kind of like digital editing or something like that, that maybe you're using on the side. I know Nick told me you got a pretty big Instagram following, so I'm sure you're into photography or videography or pictures. He does or his thing, that's maybe. for sure. But like you can yeah, spend yeah. something like that, then you get a job with the government. So you got a solid paycheck. You know that's coming in as long as you do X, Y, and B. And it's not hard. You've you've been a Marine. Anything after that, I'm telling you, is easy as fuck. So it's going to be simple to be like, this is easy. What? This is what I got to do? Oh. And then now you're pursuing your lifetime dream as a hobby. And then if you make it big, then you can, you know, leave that behind. But you'll always have that solid paycheck passive income government because honestly i'm gonna write a book my i've already got three books now but i'll write my fourth book and i'll call that shit i'll call it freelance or entrepreneuring is not that tight (laughs) (laughs) seriously it's hard when the market's not good and if you're counting on your kids going to soccer and you're counting on this and you're counting on that bro you need stability so like the government is really a solid place to be at and I think if a lot of us leaders started involving ourselves in the government, whether it's actually needs to happen, outside, needs to happen, we can literally change the direction and change what it will look like, you know, and it's really going to take true leaders to um, move. Me and, Dre, me and Dre talk about this a lot, man, because right now, you know, the people that are running the world are not who needs to be making the decisions that they are. And we as alphas, you know, we need to get involved in politics a lot more because, you know, a lot of us just look at the situation and we're always just like, oh, I can't, it's nothing's going to change or nothing I do is going to yeah, affect why this or try? anything. Why yeah, even exactly. Go vote? exactly. But sure. we, yeah. or, or if you're active duty, like it's kind I'm, I don't know what the order is, but I'm pretty, I know if you're a politician, there's the Hatch Act. So there's certain uh, laws that even bar you from being somewhat politically active, which really? kind of like deadens. Yeah. I mean, you know, the Hatch Act is a real thing. If you're a politician, you're, or if you work for the government, actually, that's what it is. If you work for the government, like say you're a GS 13 or something, you can't be out advocating for a certain political party or whatever it may be. Or there's certain things you can and can't say inside the Hatch Act. I know like uh, people always try to use that against somebody so else. So never, against- never go against the home team or the boys are coming. No. It's just yeah. like it's unfortunate because it, our our real alphas are inside the military and then they get yep. out and they're not like accustomed to being politically active. So they're not yep. really like paying attention. Think about to it because if you're active, dude, and you start chirping about something, all of a sudden Gunny comes in, Massar comes in, then you're at the Master Guns office. It's just oh, man, it's yeah. something that's like, you know, controversial. You know, you could get rid of Forget up, about it. Yeah. Your eval and you can't even pick yep. up Sarge and shit. So it's like it's and an you're on restriction that, on green on green. And, it's an environment yeah. that unfortunately is just like you're not going to really get to do that. But on the side or like while you're in be studying like I had to I got out and I asked myself, why the fuck were we in Afghanistan? And I had to backtrack all the way to like 1970s when America when brought in American nice. corporations into um, Kabul and they brought in, you know, infrastructure. And so America had a deals with them but then russia came in and tried to make some more deals and then there's this gang and this gang joins this faction and this faction and then we try to regime change and there's just a whole lot of history but i basically did that with almost everything i had to say like hold up man like what's my entire view and unfortunately when you're active duty like you just really can't do that you've got to just like go at a slow pace like study american history at a slow pace because you don't want to get to the point where like you hate the military, you hate the Which, government. Dude, like, it happens. It happens. Oh, quick. Wa- oh, watch this. This is the perfect example. I'll just give you one example. I had to learn it. We were talking about earlier about your little FMF pin, right? I had to learn Marine Corps history, and I learned about um, John Harper's ferry raid. This you know is a good one. That? This is a good one. Yeah. 
You know about that? From Never me? heard about that. Talk that shit. It's like, a, it's like a Marine Corps history point in our FMF study book that it's like, you know, because um, this was one of the first times that the Marines got called in domestically to handle an issue. And so when I was taught as a corpsman, just studying on my FMF book and I had to stand there in front of the master chief and be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. When I was doing that, it was basically like, oh, yeah, the, this was one of the victories for the Marines. Hoorah. They sent them into Harper's Ferry. Hoorah. And we were like, hoorah. Then I studied <laughs> history and I'm like, hold the fuck up. John yeah. Harper was Wait, a man. white dude. Yeah, This was fucked up. John Harper was a white dude who helped uh, African-American slaves free themselves armed them and they held down their spot second amendment early second amendment <laughs> here held down their spot and said yo we want to fight for our freedom which you have the right to and they sent in the marines to kill them all Max. and that was taught to me as a victory for the marine corps of course just one example i'm not going to bring up the gulf of tonkin we already talked about weapons of mass destruction lying us into iraq but this is a pattern it is a it pattern definitely is because the people that are Dre, we're gonna fuck him all up, man. Well, you can, I tell Rob. <laughs> no, I've already the no. I, I, like, like it's like little by little. Like mm. you can't be oblivious to it, but you no, don't you can't take it all in because you'll be so angry. Yeah, especially if you, you wear cannot, your dead like, just on your exactly. wrist. Exactly. So angry. Ignorant, like ignorant little little. of what we're doing. Like, um, yeah. have you have you guys have you guys watched Vice? What what the channel? No, it's the the movie with Christian Bale being Dick Cheney. Talking about oh, it's going it's to great movie, out, right? great movie, yeah. great movie, yeah. So like shit you, like that. So you understand, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, and like I'm caught up. Like the what, what um, what the the military Instagram community is doing, like giving us like a discourse to to talk about things, and then like they'll like I, I think it's led to a generally more aware force in terms of things like that all like everything that you're like the basis maybe not the, the specifics but the basis of the ideas that you are uh proposing to me right now we are all drinking the kool-aid on that uh, to d varying wow. degrees really but like there's nobody you thought, what's his name um mattis he yeah. literally some people think it's treason so it's just like i'm going to start this off before i say it i'm not even going to say what side i'm on because i don't even know if i've really walked myself all the way through it but Mattis, I'm pretty sure it was Mattis. He was Trump's some kind of high up position or whatever yeah. he was. He told China behind Trump's back that if they were going to go to war, he would let them know. Now, on the one hand, people will say that's motherfucking treason. You can't go against the president. You can't. But on the other hand, you could say, especially if you don't like Trump, because some people don't like Trump, obviously. You would say he's actually saving us from going to World War Three. Yeah. So like there is this literal tension. You know, you said it earlier when you were like, um, you're talking about like, oh yeah, you know, I just I try to keep politics out of it or whatever. And I immediately thought back to Germany and I immediately thought, like, what if we were all three here born out of a, a woman's vagina but, but came out the vaginal canal in Germany? We're German citizens, we joined the military, and then we're sent to go kill Jews because we're Nazi German. Well, we still do it we'd be like fuck politics we just gotta do what we gotta do guys yeah or would we be yeah. like yo this is not right actually let's stand Probably up not. tell you right now some of my worst nightmares that i still have to this day are times when i didn't stand up for what was right and i, oh, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about i know exactly like what you're talking about. prisoners or something yeah especially as a corpsman if the people we're getting into a firefight with are injured if they're a non-combatant with the gun, even the gun's just like laying right there and he can't really, you know what I'm saying? Because his, his arm's yeah. shredded or something. I'm supposed to take care of him. And especially when you're working with the Afghanistan police, yep. and patrol, they're really close. Like, I mean, it, at one point they were like, that guy killed my cousin last weekend. It, and then they just started like hitting him in the face. with the, yeah. And I just like, wait, bro. I was like, I'll do the physical later. And so yeah. like, if it was me today, I would have stood up for what was right and be like, look guys, no, as much as we have hatred, we should not be using more violence on this. You know, let's do. That, that's a tough one, Dre. That's a it tough is one. When you're there, especially, but yeah. I, in hindsight, 2020, but like, this is what I'm saying. Like, we need to start developing people. And it sounds like, you know, I, I really haven't heard that. So that's great news. But it sounds like, you know, it is happening to where we do need to get smarter people because we can't yes. be supporting imperialism. 
When we brought Juan Guaido, if you don't know who Juan Guaido is, go look him up. 2020, Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro is the president. He was elected by a certain amount of percentage of his people. It's like, oh, well, the election was rigged. And they say that about every fucking election, so whatever. But he was elected president for a while. Juan Guaido was never elected. We actually brought him to the White House. Trump brought him to the White House and had him stand up or had everybody in Congress there stand up and clap for him and said, the president. Oh, yeah, I remember this. He was never voted president of Venezuela. Never, ever, ever. This is a coup. It's when the government tries to take over a country from the inside. But that was wrong. Deep that state was shit. So wrong. They even blockaded and sanctioned Venezuela for when they couldn't even get certain medications, especially during COVID. That was wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. I know none of us enlisted folks will ever have the chance to change that at all. And if it was like, hey, you better blockade this. And you're like, oh, I'm not going to do that, sir. And they'll fucking NJP you and you'll be fucked your whole life. So I'm not saying do some dumb shit. You know, just take it all in. Yeah. Be aware. Be aware. Get out. Yeah. Start reading right now, bro. The People's History by Howard Zinn. He was a combat veteran turned historian who, you know, if I'm going to have respect for a veteran, nothing against veterans at all but the combat veterans just have a different view of things and he Dex. was out there in his uh he was a pilot and he's just shredding cats <laughs> you know it's different when you see pink mist for reals you start, seeing pink mist, you start seeing bodies doing things that they're fucking not ears doing. shoulders so that just like that guy howard's in came back became a historian wrote books and told people about Christopher for Columbus, for example, today, not in Japan, because the timeline is different, but today is Christopher Columbus Day here in America, but only for a certain amount of states, because where I live in California, they officially changed the, the name to Indigenous People Day. Are you and serious? Some people might be like, oh, oh, that's stupid. Oh, that's woke. Oh, oh blue hair. No, uh, motherfucker. Christopher Columbus was kind of a dick. Not kind of. He was. Dis- yeah, he was a wicked bad. Go read about him. He was. Dis- yeah, he was. Yeah, that dude and was a lance celebrate for sure. Him is almost <laughs> as bad as celebrating. Uh, the commanders of the South Army. We have like Robert E. Lee School and shit. I'm like, what the fuck are we doing celebrating the Dre? South- ho- Dre, hold on, hold on one sec. What do you now? You were in when this happened. What do you think about uh, uh, H. Kaya? Uh, you know, as as I mean, come. I don't even know what that is. Uh, the it, the, it the airport the cool. airport incident. Oh, in Afghanistan. Yeah. Fucking clown show. Yo, yo. So, fucking black markets flooded with the weapons. What do you think? So, come so, me, so, right so all of a sudden, I mean, the Taliban's right in front right of now. these guys. What, what yeah, kind let of me, back let me, door? Go ahead. From my, the perspective of my friends. Go ahead. Like my, you know, my name, my last name started with A, so I did not go to one eight. I went to two two. Um, but my buddies that that were there, uh. Yeah, one sec. Um, like I went to when I went to advanced school was when I, I, I met a lot of them, a lot of fucking dudes that were had a big influence over the uh, the AO, um, being up there on the fucking gun, and like a lot of them like they're like yeah, like we like we smoked a guy, and that's just so crazy. Like to be, like to be sitting with guys that are your rank in today's time, talking about how they killed someone. Like it, it, like it's just like it's like wow. Holy more shit. Badly, more more yeah. so, what do you think about that? Le- the leadership, though, dude. I mean, no. So that so they can't even really comment with on those guys. It. Yeah, you couldn't. None of them are here anymore. Like none of them. I don't mean. Oh, like, really? Like still alive, but those dudes, like, they all got out because of that. I know. Two weeks. Yeah, you're right. Of that That's... two weeks, in the two weeks, they saw. We all saw how the military leadership really does things. Yeah. And the kind of, like, a talk about all the eyes, all the intelligence assets, all the decision-making capability being centralized in one place at one time. And yet still we had those massive, massive failures yeah. in tactical decision-making. Bro, imagine we, having and, and gone the, the men on the ground, there. the men on the ground knew. Every single one of them knew what the correct COA yeah. Yeah. What was going to be. Yeah. Yep. But they couldn't, they, they, their, their assertions fell upon deaf ears. 
Is that um, just someone not wanting to put their self on the line, or they're worried about? No, no it's just I yeah. It's just he called poke spoke up, bro. It's it's so high up because it's a profit thing. Think about this. Do you know how much money? Like, if you don't know how the world works, you need to listen. It works by money. And if you own a business, you make your decisions based off of profits. Lobbying is legal. If you don't know what lobbying is, it's the ability for people to donate to your campaign, lots of money to buy you certain things. There's stipulations that go with this. But there are lobbyists inside the department of, I mean, inside of the military industrial complex companies. The military industrial complex is this fancy word for basically all these companies that make the weapons. Boeing, Halliburton. Raytheon. North when you start Roman. using your equipment that you're using every day, start asking questions. Say, who made this? What company made this? Then go look at that company and see if you can find the documents for how much that costs versus how much they're selling it. They are making billions and billions and billions. And I'm not kidding you when I say that. How are that. you tying this in? Because think about it, bro. All of those weapons and all of that money, we just have to replace it now. So we need more. So go call Boeing up. We how many Humvees did we Humvees did we lose? Uh, two hundred, sir. All right, we're gonna need a hundred to replace those. You know what I'm saying? Like, what did? Yeah. How many weapons? It's were no. There? Yeah, it's no secret that we're all we're all stormtroopers in service of the military industrial complex. Like that is, That's we cool. all understand that at that point. But it's kind of like a a, a bad that we have to take with the good and we you try know, to no like leader out there in active duty or officer said this is a great idea you not one no. they've been there tactically managing yeah, well, it, here's for the them. thing here's the thing and when it came down to like we can theorize about all the you know all the different ulterior motives that different individuals that were calling the shots those two weeks might have had that affected the way that we did it I think that, like, let's apply Occam's razor. I believe that the most likely thing was we had all the all the military leaders and all of the the politicians. All of our, our eyes as a nation were on yeah. Kabul those two yeah. weeks. Yeah. So think about that environment. Think about yeah, that how people AO, act. Yeah. That AO is not in control. By a lieutenant. No, no, no. Not in control by a, a company commander, no, battalion a, commander, a regimental commander, yeah. generals. It's not in the control of two star, three star, four star generals. No. Those guys can't, weren't being trusted to make the decisions. Exactly. So I think that what it really just is like bringing up war fighting, it's just friction in that chain of command. That chain of command, those two weeks was fucking massive yeah all right, right. lieutenant right. colonels can it just be like yeah you can take the shot let me ask the colonel first yeah let me right. ask the general right. first yeah let me ask general milley first let me ask the secretary area of defense it's fucking first. ridiculous it's fucking Bro, ridiculous. To let the like, Taliban not... get our weapons oh they literally just said if you give us a free passage in the middle east we'll go take over no bro, bro he's talking he's talking about taking the shot about the guy that Pulled the yeah the bombers the, the intel that we had for sure the the, the, the relaxed the like not the relaxed the constricted ROE that did, like that prevented us what was from the imposing. ROE at that point with political I mean, ROE they had None? guys they had guys with like there were dudes yeah there were guys with Taliban standing there with guns and I'm hearing this from all my buddies like yeah. again I wasn't there so no, take yeah, everything yeah, yeah. that I'm that I'm saying with a grain of salt but what all of my buddies that were there telling me they're like Man, I got my MDO trained on a Taliban fighter with an AK, and he's butt stocking a woman and child. Oh boy! And I can't do anything about it. Crazy. Talk about emotional trauma. Like not in like not a what like a bad decision that you could, but just being helpless. You did all of this, all this training to be told like the the responsibility Terrible. that you had. Uh, we're a force for good, and you just have to sit there and witness evil, and you can't do anything about it because. What'd you say? Huh? What was the justification for not allowing it? Because they didn't want they didn't want to escalate. 
They didn't want to, they didn't, they didn't want to, they didn't want to, they just thought like the priority was getting the Americans and the, so uh, at, at the, the time, these, all these guys are storming the gate and what the Taliban are meant to control the Afghan civilians. That's yeah, what it, was... it was like. It was like a sort of like uh, it was like a, a nervous handshake between yeah. us and the backdoor Taliban. deal. Like, yeah, backdoor deal. Like, like if you don't fuck with us, we won't fuck with you. You have till this day That's to so get these weird. guys That's and get so out of here. So strange. I mean, and, how and then we're like, we're like, we're like, we're like, OK, mm-hmm. OK, guys. All right. Yeah, thank no you. Shit. Thank you, Taliban. Thank you very much. Dude. We'll take I mean, our guys we, and we'll go. We shouldn't have been in the first place, but like either we were going to stay there longer or like, what do you really do? It pro- They probably did the math and was probably like, it'll cost us more money. Yeah, to you're like, right. Basically get this shit out exactly of here. exactly what happened. I, uh, I think Throw that we should. Like, give it to the Taliban, bro. Yeah. They're fucking with yeah, I think that right we. Like, I can't stand that. I know. We should. I need these fucks for fucking. Well, there's theories. Months of my life. There's theories that. Like the the leaving the equipment and the weapons might have been a calculated move by the CIA in order to perhaps are inadvertently like say like oh whoopsie you know we're dumb little the United States we're you know whoops we forgot our shit but really we you know whatever the CIA is doing at any given time like really we were arming them and equipping the Taliban to potentially fuck with Iran fuck with like different people that we didn't like in the middle east via proxy well, sure. so it's all going it's all going wars. to palestine or all, all, all we're doing is proxy wars yeah, nowadays it's you know, like it's just us funding us funding and training ukraine us funding and training the tribes that we like in africa us funding and training the tribes that we the, the groups that we that we like in the middle east we're just proxy warring Fucked all up. day I can't stand and it. eventually Wrong, dude. it's and because iran the is proxy that's warring actually us. been doing that on the front lines gets to the top and is like no more of this. One of us, yeah. if one of us gets to the top, bro, I promise you, so we've been there. It will not happen no more. What do you, what do you no, both, right. think, what, what do you both think about the Hawaii incident? Do you, do you both? Because I mean, I've heard so many things that that wasn't Wait. natural, <laughs> that it was like an energy weapon or some shit because of the things that you know the way the fire burned, certain things weren't touched. I mean, does that? I mean, we always speculate that there's like a civilian operator force that is doing some of these things whether it's training these guys in ukraine i mean who's training these guys i know they're yeah. training mm-hmm. i know they're training in the united states but what is that cia some of them are training on like the jets or the the artillery that we're giving them and the tanks and stuff yeah but like i'm saying who is training them if anyone it would be a marine it would be it would be someone you know just like we did with the with the Afghans, it would be, it, it, like it primarily be like we don't Marines. We don't specialize in foreign internal defense in the way that our kind of our counterparts in in tier two special operations forces like that would be a Green Beret or a Delta guys slice of cake in the teaching, you know, teaching guys how to fucking shoot, how to clear rooms, how to operate a Carl Gustav. They would do that before they would let us do it. Um, Yo, so but like, how crazy I, I, is it's we, definitely. Sorry, I'll say, well, how crazy is that we live in a world where the superpower of the world, the policeman of the world, is literally out destabilizing all these regions. Yeah, that's, that's what's happening. Funding one group yeah. of people here. That is objectively happening here. for it's sure. Crazy. It's so. It's so. That's popular. really happening. Oh so, yes, it's and we're so ca- we're casually talking about it. Like I know yeah. because there's nothing we could do. There's nothing. I, I there, there's there's nothing we could like, do. Half so, a million impressions almost a month on Twitter. So the three of us are just casually talking how the United States is funding different narratives to get different outcomes. Like it's so fucked up. It does. And it's, it even the only thing that you can United you States. can just hope is that it's United. for a like good, for the greater good. It's not though. That's like that's it's not. not it's it's, it's, it's all not money, bro. Be. No, yeah, it's not going to be. It's, it's not going to be for, for the, the greater, greater good law. because even one life, innocent life lost, like it's. But it's one. It's even above the United States. So if you know anything about the financial market, right? The S and P five hundred. The S and P five hundred is the top five hundred companies that are traded on the stock exchange. Eighty eight percent of those companies, and I mean eighty eight percent. That means BlackRock. Almost nine out of ten. The number one, uh, stockhold. A stock owner to own the most stock in the company is BlackRock, State Street, or Vanguard. It's all these three companies. And then you see who who owns Vanguard. It's State Street and BlackRock. Who owns BlackRock? It's Vanguard and State Street. It's like this conglomerate. But what they're doing is now, since they have the number one position 
in terms of who owns each company, like they might, they might own like 9% of this gigantic company, but because they're the majority owner, they have the say, but what they can do now, cause they hold so much wealth, they're responsible for a third of the world's money supply. Just this one group that I'm talking about, it's three large companies, but it's really just one group. They're responsible for a third of the world's money supply at any given time. So what they can do is they can force agendas, right? Like you've heard of ESG where it's like, if you're not going to environmental scores, like where it's like, look, uh, you don't have the score that we want you to have because you don't have these things. So we're not going to give you a loan because companies need loans to survive and grow. And that's how that works out here. And so it's not just the U S doing it. It's literally, it's like a little monopoly. There's a great book called giants that basically walks you through this transnational meaning connected many nations around the world, this transnational capitalist group, the small group of the richest people in the world who have so much play on things that they can literally make moves. Like you saw, well, I'll show you the biggest move that was made this year. All last year, it was ramped up. I mean, there was a bunch of lies coming out of China, like, oh, Xinjiang problems, they got uh, slaves there, blah, blah, blah. And then they started getting to like, oh, Taiwan, we're going to support Taiwan independence. Blinken, Secretary Blinken went over there, came back from China and said, we don't support Taiwan independence. Literal 180. Why? Well, go look behind the narrative. There was some companies that had been riding in weeks before that telling Blinken like, yo, my, I have uh, billions of dollars invested in China. What are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I have a huge workforce. How do you think the iPhones are being made? They're all being made in China. Yeah, they are. What are you going to do? Just stop production on the second most popular phone brand and then computers? Like you'd have a so shortage in the market. It would literally fuck up so many things. So you have this other class as well that plays a part in this. And, you know, especially when you're in the military, I knew none of this stuff. But as you get older, you'll start to see like all of these are getting into play. And I think if more active duty people knew about this, if we just understood it, Especially when we get in positions to make decisions or be Facts. influential, we can use that for the good. Because I'm telling you right now, it's not being good. Look at the Ukraine thing, bro. Most people, they just put the little Ukraine flag up in their thing. No idea. I'm going to be yeah. real. Both sides are discussing, but let's walk it through. What happened? 2013, there was an illegal protest. It was violent. It was about 30,000 people in Kiev. December 1st is called the Maidan. The president who was elected, Yanukovych. He had been elected before uh, four years before that. Ukrainian constitution says you can go for five years as the president. And so this is all democratically. So 2009 comes, or the, the Maidan in 2013 comes, and Yanukovych went away from a deal with the EU that was going to provide energy with EU. They went with Russia because Russia has a hold on the energy out there. And a lot of the people didn't like it. You know, we have our own factions here in the u.s look what happened with january 6th whatever yeah. you want to call that it was a different faction that didn't like what was going on and they took uh an action and so you have that in countries and so you had a, a group of people but look what happened the protest got so violent and this is what i tell people i'm like if this was in the u.s you would never support that you would ne it would be like if january 6th got out of control no because no one knows about it dre no one knows about it the media well, pushes fast through all these things, so they no, don't know about fast. it. Well, you know we're here saying? to tell them. That's our job as communicators is to tell people about how these things started. Go look it up. Literally, you have John McCain. He was alive at the time, obviously, and Victoria Newland. If you don't know who these people are, you need to know. Obviously, John McCain's gone, but Victoria Newland, she's still alive. She was just in Niger. You just said it. We're funding whichever rebel group in Africa that we like. Yeah, facts. Niger had a coup where they, the military took over and was like, we're not going to let you colonize us anymore, France. And, of course, Americas have interest. That's we have a wild. place down there. And so Victoria Newland, hey, she's on the phone quick. We need you out there in Africa, Victoria, because she's the coup leader. She's the one who goes and starts these things inside. She goes and finds the rebels. She goes to Kiev and she says, who's the rebels? They say right sector, Azov. Like, they go to them. How much money do you need to get this riot so out of control that the police and the military can't control it anymore? And that's what happened. The Maidan got so out of control that the police and the military could not control it anymore. The president fled for his life. He went to Russia. While he fled, they put in a new president. That is illegal as fuck. That's wild. That is not a democracy. Then the Donbass, these other areas of Ukraine, if you go back to the Soviet Union, they used to be part of what is you know now called Russia, but they're all connected. The Donbass area is like 91% ethnic Russian or something like that. 
they are like, fuck this. We're not going along with that shit. Yanukovych is our president. What are you talking about? We elected him. He still has a year left. How come we're doing this? This is illegal. They don't go along with it. The new government in Kiev is like, yo, fuck you guys then. They start even shelling them. They vote. The Donbass votes themselves out. Russia comes in, takes the land bridges, and holds where they've held the whole time. You think Ukraine's winning? You ain't watching shit. No, really they not. have not budged. Russia has not budged. They no. still have control of the land bridges. You notice that? How they're the making Donbass. it seem like Ukraine's winning, dude? Because they don't want us to be mad that all of our money is mm. going in there when our money should be going to the community center. The community Facts. center in Toledo has 30 slots. Facts. If you can't get your kid in, you're done. You can't get your kid into preschool because there's not enough slots. But there's like 20 open buildings and like 100,000 Dre, people Dre, people Dre, hold up one second. We're hitting, the money. Dre, we're hitting two hours right now. Old boys got chow to get. I feel you, Corporal. No, get, no. I'm, I'm I'm good to go. You are, you all right? I mean, oh hell yeah! I don't know. got yeah. I got fucking okay. Gotcha. I'm, I'm thinking about you over here, dude. He's just getting he's just no, getting yeah. warmed up. I mean, we're just no. We just I'm start f- talking about you. Yeah. Like, no, let's no, go. So let's I, go. I wanted to fucking um. It's a long time ago. You asked about Force Design 2030, um, oh, relating some shit that we've talked about. Back to that, so like Kabul, chain of command. Wait, the sandwich was stacked too fucking high, too many layer, too many layers of that fucking sandwich to get through to get anything done. And there's, we got do, we got guys on the ground that knew exactly what needed to happen tactically, and they they couldn't, they were shackled, and people lost their lives because of it, because they could not act on the intel that they had, you know. But doesn't, doesn't that make you guys feel a certain way? I mean, because it comes back. You guys are all seeing it. Yeah, it's angering as fuck. You feel we've we we have all we we are trained every day to be good at this one thing that people that never have done it they have control over 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 how we how we run things. That's like, funny. That's that drives me nuts. That drives me. It's insane. ridiculous. But going to Force Design twenty thirty. Primarily established against a near peer conflict, i.e., China, mainly. And it is a way of a different sort of subdivision of maneuver warfare that we are trying to adopt in order to impose a large combat influence over the Pacific Island chain. So has that got to you guys yet? Have, have they started implementing that into, into training at all or. No, they're not, not tangibly. Like we're talking about it a lot. We talk about like how, you know, there's dudes, you know, busting out hip pocket, like foraging classes gotcha, gotcha. about like, you know, the EABO, you know, we're going to have to start. We might be without water, we might be without food. I'm talking with like my company commander. He's like, Probably a lot of that would be looking like like if we went to war with China, like company commanders having like a fucking like a like a government like a credit card or they and then going to like Taiwan out in to town. Get or, yeah, 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 out yeah, in yeah. town in the local country to fucking buy supplies because we're gonna be fucking so that's the trendy. trickiest thing, dude, is getting shit out there. Uh, yeah, know. yeah. Logistics. Yeah, logistics is, is the hardest thing dude. to do. I mean, essentially, you need to become a mobile gas station, dude, because all of our equipment, you know, what, what are we running it with? I mean, yeah, so tricky. I it is, it is very tricky. And so with that, like. What we're trying to do is we're trying to we're trying to lean out, we're trying to lean out as a force and get rid of, you know, we're not. The, tanks, we, we assault men. tanks, yeah. assault men. We're trying to be. Changing. Ukraine has been showing us. We have a. We're trying to be. We're trying to be faster, more. We're trying to make ourselves smaller, but also more able to affect armor, because our opponents are relying heavily on armor. So we have want we, have, to. Have we seen just as Dre just said? Have we seen that in Ukraine a little bit? Look at all the tanks getting blown the fuck up over yeah, there, bro. dude. Yeah. You know what? One of the biggest infantry MOS is probably to, to start if they don't change it to maybe the javelin guys but it's going to be drone missiles bro or drone operators just drone guys yeah no that doctrine so you'll be happy to know that that doctrine is being created at aitb as we speak baby kale (laughs) yeah it's fucking 
it is going down. The, the, yeah, That's the, like the, the only SUAS. good thing about this shit is like we don't have to take casualties. I know some veterans have gone over and fought in the Ukraine war, unfortunately, and shit, but like we don't have to take casualties to get all this data from this what good, a yeah, this war good, All these like. lessons, we can learn mm -hmm. them through somebody else. Because the entire it, but... rest of the world, the whole rest of the world has been learning lessons from us for the last 20 years, Gosh. from all mm -hmm. the fighting that we've been doing. And so now we get to study mm -hmm. their game film a little bit, right? And this but... is a little bit different game film because really all these past wars have really been like guerrilla fighting. You know, it's obviously not in the jungles, but it's, it's like guerrilla fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan. It's close quarters or it's up in the mountains, but it's the same kind of concept. And this is actual two formidable militaries. Obviously, you have the U.S. backed weapons with Ukraine and then you have Russia with their stuff. So it's like you're actually getting what a more modern war would look like data than you are getting with us just fucking around and with the Taliban or whatever. But no, 100%, I, I do got to go. I want to jump on this another time with you guys. I, I wanted to say, um, Corporal, appreciate talking to you, bro. I don't really get a chance to talk to people that are inside the military, but couple things that you told me and just being able to see your your uh your posture and just the way you handle yourself i'm very happy to hear that the core is doing great and i'm glad there's good leaders in there and i appreciate your service bro it's been a long road for people we're just passing that torch down and so you got it right now and you're doing your thing i definitely want to jump on another time i got to go get these kids to bed i hear them up there do your thing brother I'm here but really good to meet you doc. I appreciate Ooh, uh, it. i'll be on here anytime bro i'm always in current events and i'll definitely add you on the socials cool to the phone appreciate you nick Hurrah. to the uh -huh. phone later guys um but so yeah getting back where we're gonna see friction in that is our primary primary strength not only as the united states military but as the marine corps specifically is our priority on the efficiency and competency of our small unit leaders yes creating small unit leaders that can enable higher command to prioritize their focus on the entire AO while we take our do, steps to the fire. It's not, it's not easy to put into practice. It's not easy for, but it's not easy for small unit leaders. To do but, that, we need experience guys, bro. That's why I said retention is huge. We need these yeah. guys. So, yeah. We are hemorrhaging skill in combat power at an alarming rate. Honestly, because... our biggest asset, dude, is is you guys, the guys that are trained, the guys or even the staff NCOs that have been to Iraq, Afghanistan, that have seen combat a little bit. Even though it's different, they can still plug yeah. into another thing and really get going. And all these guys are getting out, dude. So it's like. It's like because we see, you know, it, we see Kabul. We see those examples. We see what's happening to us in our in our careers. You know, we're all we're all. Everybody that's in right now is part of the generation that was was forced to get the vaccine or go fuck oh, yourself, I eat can't shit. Imagine that, dude. And then and then a year a year later they changed their mind. They're like, guys, please come back. We're so sorry that we 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 promise we won't be the government again. They're gonna did, like dude, as a mass, how did that what did that do? Tell me about that. What did that there, you know, there's your guys that are always your classic, like it's like that one scene in that one scene in Jarhead where they're trying to take that they're taking the medication that isn't tested. He's yeah. like the guys like the guys like my fucking dick's gonna grow a mouth and start talking yeah, to me, yeah, man. Yeah. I'm not fucking eating that shit. <laughs> um, there's the guys that don't care that are like fuck it, fuck dude. It. Like they like well, the, the, it's like like you know exactly what they shot you up in Paris Island with. No, you just assumed it was all good, right? It went right. So why is this line. any different? Yeah, exactly. But. A lot like, yeah, there were some dudes, specifically like religious guys that were just like straight up like, no, no, I'm not going to fucking do it. Mm. And yeah, yep. they all got to, booted. to see they all got booted. Yeah, they all they all got booted. And then now it's like and both of them, both of them, the, the guys in my mind that I'm thinking about that I worked with specifically that got booted. They're all like, I was going to reenlist. They're like, yeah, I wasn't even planning on getting out, but I, I, I like, I'm just not going to, this is where I draw the line. So I'm not going to put up with this. And yeah, that, so, and like, I, I, I think both of them also told me that they're like, if they tell me I can come back and they give me a good deal, I probably will, but I'm not fucking doing the, I'm not doing the thing. I'm not taking the shot. Yeah, and I'm like, able. good, good to you for yeah, like being like, being that fucking but still bro we got to be able to trust our leadership and that's a huge kick to the nuts that's the huge that's that's a big thing and 
what I brought up earlier about like politics and keeping it out of, I mean, like keeping politics out of. Bro, I heard you. Dre's, Dre, Dre's a different beast when it comes to politics, bro. Yeah. You got to understand him. I heard you. I feel you. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't, our job is to be the best. That's it. At killing people. That's it. You bring politics and, into something like yeah. that, dude, it fucks everything up. Dude. Yeah. So with that, and this is true in any organization, this isn't a fault of the Marine Corps or anything, but like you start getting up higher. It's not like you get, I don't think that the thing is the, the, the main, like the first thing that you say about like the disparity between lower leadership and higher leadership, it's like, oh, they're out of touch. It's not that. Like they get it. They remember what it was like. Like it's, they haven't forgotten. It's that now they're not just like a single NCO living in the barracks whose job it is. Like they have people relying on them. They have yeah, a wife, right. they have children. So when it comes time to do the hardest thing in the world, which is say no, when somebody say no to somebody because you know that it's the right thing to do, it's like, yeah. You get, is this worth you're, it? You're, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. Yeah. Is this is this worth it? So, and that starts even that starts at the NCO level, the staff NCO level, the junior officer level is when it starts. Like, this isn't just me and my reputation, my career. I'm not going to be the fucking, you know, like I said, the like guinea that. pig. Yeah. No, I hear you. Yeah, the guinea like this, like whatever, dude. As long as I know I'm doing the right thing, that's all I care about. It's like, dude, I have to take care of my children. Yeah, exactly. So it's like. So those dudes, right? With the when the vaccine comes around, it's like I can't just stop life. Yeah, I, know. I can't just stop my life, and it's not any fault of their own. It, they're just they're in very human circumstances, and yeah. they have to make a very human choice. Well, put. so that is that is a that's a big thing, and there's nothing you you can you can try to be aware of it. You could try to be cognizant of it, but there at the at the end of the day. There's not really anything that you could do yeah, to be like, well, be a man and put your foot down and say well, we, no. And... We can still bitch about it, all right? Yeah, we can still bitch about it. We can still bitch about it. So that's the thing. But yeah, keeping politics out of the fucking infantry battalion and all this, yeah, like he said, she said, bullshit, favoritism, like it's performance. It should just be about performance. The only thing you need to worry about, dude, is your gun up and your sector of fire is good. Your boys are locked in. You know the mission and you know you can execute. That's all that is it. So that is why. And so more and more we get away from that. And every time that we get away from that, we lose people because we're here to do a job and we never feel like that we get to do it. And we feel like too much of our attention is spent on places elsewhere than being the best fucking I never thought of that. I never thought of that. That's the kind of generation that you guys are in, huh? You you never get to test what you've been training, really, and you always get you. You guys have dealt with a lot of bullshit out of like out of like what we're meant to do. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It's not. It's 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 like being on the practice squad and never getting to fucking play a game, and all that you're doing is dealing with the fucking bullshit about like our attention is being pulled in in every which yeah. way. From that, except just doing. You're, te- you're what, tested in every way, but combat. Yeah, and not even like, it's not. It, it's not just the like. Well, I don't like the military because we're not at war, and it's just that simple. It's not like that. It's just, it's be, it's becoming so political because what happens is, what happens, and I've been saying this since I was a PFC. What happens is now that we aren't at war, the leadership the leaders that exist are not, they did not gain that position through the, through the crucible. Right. I don't mean the actual crucible. No, 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 no. I mean, they actually, there was no filter for them to pass through to get where they are. They are here because they stuck around, not out of merit. They stuck around. So, like they they just got to the point where it's like, well now yeah I got the kid on the way and I'm I'm married now so you know what's another what this is what I gotta you know? do yeah exactly yeah the yeah. the thought of getting out is terrifying and it is it is terrifying that's a, that's 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 a again that's a human thing oh, yeah. to have hell yeah but it's not based off of like 2004 if you were a bad leader you died facts. 
your Marines died. Facts. Facts. Straight fucking baptism like, into combat. Yep. Yes. Baptism so, of fire. That made leaders that were fucking competent because that's the only reason why they're here that's is because yeah. they were good enough at their job to make it. And that doesn't exist now. No, it doesn't. So now, right? So now that that's the case, again, like I, like I'm focused on as as with no war, like what I was focused on as a junior Marine, I was focused about getting ready for advanced school, getting all these courses under my belt, because that's the only way that I can validate myself in my profession now, because we're not at war. Yeah. So that's what I, that's my baptism by fire yeah. is trying to, trying to train myself as much as I can. Of course. But, and then with, with with the senior leadership it's like well we don't have you know we're not combat oriented so let's you know let's let's get them in college let's get them in fucking let's talk about all these fucking let's go to all these stupid ass half ass classes uh, about shit that doesn't have anything to do with is are with, the with are the fighting are the fuck fuck games like yeah because everybody's bored like everybody's yeah. antsy yeah. nobody knows especially here Especially when you're on deployment because they yeah. all live right next door. Yeah, so exactly. they're like, yeah, you're not going to get away from them now. Ugh. Like, it's not – everybody is just fucking antsy. Yeah, We're no. antsy and nobody has any credibility and we're just looking – we're looking We're looking for a fight. I was just going to say that. For I was fight. just going to say that, yep. Yeah, we, especially we, with we, especially with Ukraine going on, Israel popping off, dude. Yeah, everybody it's here like, we dude, are like, with our saws, just like you know. Yeah, it's like dudes thinking about like, man, if I didn't join or if I had gotten out instead of re-enlisted last year, I could be volunteering in Ukraine and fighting in a war. You know, like wow. it's it's shit like that. It's like wars everywhere else, except for in the military and yeah. it's like it's like yeah like combat is is it combat sucks and it's gonna it's gonna fuck us up but doesn't matter it doesn't matter dude it's it, we crave that we crave your, that that's yeah that's just it's it's your soul it's what it's, it's like, why it's, we it's, all join bro it's why we all join honestly i mean don't get me wrong some people did fucking, it we, we join the want for to actually yeah. it's us getting to leave in our minds a positive mark towards something greater in the greater course of history. Yep, yep. It's a bunch of dispirited young men from around the country finally being given the opportunity to say, I was here. Yeah. I was here and I'm real and I contributed to this. I, I got did the to damn thing. Something. I stomped, I I stomped around this motherfucker and I held my own. Yes. So, and that's why we love the Marine Corps so much. It's not because of all the shitty stuff I'm talking about. It's because at one point or another, we are all here because we wanted to, we wanted to, to have that shared purpose. Yeah. And that's why we look, we look back fondly on, on all the memories, all of our friends I tell Not I'm telling stupid. you right now, dude. Take as many pictures as you fucking can. I, I know am, that sounds yeah. corny, but dude, that's that's all you're gonna have when you eventually get out, dude. And you want the memories. I mean yeah. it, dude. They mean so much. Every, dude. Everybody's like, Wait, dude, stop taking fucking it's videos. Not, dude, and I'm photos. telling you, it's fuck like, them, dude. Just take them. Yeah, yeah. I mean it, a hundred percent. But that. So with all that being said, we have. A, a great deal of our leadership is untested in terms of combat and looking forward to EABO, looking forward to Forces Design 2030 and taking our already famously decentralized command, which has allowed us to do so much um, as an organization and decentralizing it even further, exponentially further. Um, what we're going to see friction with as well as the fact that being in the military right now blows ass yeah um and we're losing guys because it sucks like no one likes to look be at the in the, when you're out of yeah, war time. looking at the yeah. situation there's so much shit that you're willing to put up with if we are i don't even mean war like if we're pumped people. out dude if we're pumped out we're pumped out you know what i mean if we're doing like i was excited like 
guys that got to go do humanitarian shit. Guys Whatever, that dude, got fuck to go, it. Get out there. Yeah. Whatever. Just actually doing yeah. the fucking thing. Yeah, actually absolutely. getting an order and getting to go do a real order. Yeah. Like whether it's helping people, whether it's killing people, whatever. As long as I got to actually contribute yeah, to something. Of course. That's all that we want. And so you. you're willing to put up with a lot of shit yep. if you actually have that. And we don't have that. So that's why people are leaving. That's it. That is it. Hands down. We're not talking about like, yeah, it's the barracks. Yeah, it's the shitty leadership. Yeah, it's the lack of ever having anything that we need when we need it. Yeah, fuck all that. Media. We're the yeah. Marines. Fuck. We can deal with that end, shit. We find ways to make it work. Yeah, that's fine. Like nobody's recruiter said, yeah, you're going to be a Marine. You're going to have all the best stuff and everything's going to be great all the time. <laughs> we said like, fuck you. Like, like I get to go out and do the thing and be be the guy. Despite that, despite facts. having facts, elite that's what makes that, that's, that makes a, that's what makes us yeah. hard, bro. Honestly, is, that's exciting. That's what yeah. is excited us, but we yeah. don't have the job. So exactly. We don't have the job, I so there's you. no drive. That's it, you. bro. That's all it. you can do, though, all you can do in this moment is be fucking badass at your job. It gets that's noticed. It, yeah. Fucking learn as much as you can on everything to do with machine guns. Be the best one behind it, and fucking just motivate guys. You know what I'm saying? I know, it, yep. dude. When it's coming from all angles, that's when you got to shine. I mean it because it yep. gets noticed, bro. It gets noticed because everyone knows it sucks. The Marine Corps yeah. sucks right you now. Got, like you got to drive them. Like that's why. And, like, I know it sounds corny, thing. dude. I know it sounds corny. Trust no. me, bro. But if it's it, true, it's true. Facts. It's flat out true. Yeah. You don't just to get be. You don't just get to be like lazy and be like. Well, learn this shit and listen yeah, to me, exactly. or you're gonna die when we get exactly. pumped out exactly. next month. No, it's it's like you have to, you have to, to create real, a narrative exactly. in their mind that what they're doing is worth something. Yes, you have to like yes. to, that because if you don't, you're gonna lose them. Just like right. we like so many, so many fucking guys. Like they just like, well, who gives a fuck? I'm getting yeah, out. Exactly. I don't want to get promoted. That's a cancer, bro. That's that that attitude's yes. a cancer. And it's gonna kill. Yes. Some, you, yes. You got to stop it. You got to provide, you got to get the, whatever you need. Competition. Competition is a competition. great one. Competition. A great yes. one for yes. small unit leaders Facts. to instill a sense of competition and a need to be the best. Yes. That is a driving. It's a motivating factor. All, yeah. Yeah. Of course. All young men, all young men and women. Um, you know what? The desire. I'm gonna, to be I'm, the gonna best. I'm gonna throw something at you. Uh, we're gonna shift gears a little bit, and this is kind of practical. You're a machine right. gunner, so one of the mm -hmm. biggest problems that I had when I was pumped out in Afghanistan, I was in a pretty, I was in a pretty significant tick. Um, I'm Vic One gunner, got a 50 cal. I got my teeny on it. Condition one, splashing down on at least two to three vehicles that came at us from the left. So we go after these vehicles. I'm talking off road, so we're going through wadis in a moving vehicle. So my TNE breaks, so my gun is like, yeah, you're free gunning. So I'm essentially shooting at one vehicle that has a PKM out the door, and I'm getting shot at from the right and the left. How do you? I never realized how hard firing from a moving vehicle at a moving target was. While just going over obstacles, dude, that is the heart. That was the hardest thing I think I've ever done is trying to, and I got accurate shots off, but I almost had to put the barrel on my, my, uh, armored, it was fucked up how I did it, but I, I just never realized at the time. Cause I had never trained shooting from a moving vehicle at a moving target ever. Is that something that Where you, do guys... you go to train that? Yeah, where do you go to? Where do you go to fucking do that shit? Wow, I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. Wild. Yeah, that's what I, dude. I wish you got a taste of Afghanistan, dude. Honestly, that dude. The, so do I. Then I'm not to not to like. It's just it was. Oh yeah. At a young age, dude, I was 21. That made me feel like I had a fucking 12 inch cock, dude. I'm talking just dragging on the ground. <laughs> you go over there and you fucking hold your own, dude. Oh my god. Yeah, you just like you're. On top of the world, like you are, you are, you are what little you dreamed about. Bam. That's it. In the simplest of terms, like you are living out what you thought was going to be. It was going to be. You thought it was going to be the whole time. Yeah. yeah we yeah, all yeah. thought that we were going to do exactly the, like the, the, the thoughts that you, you know, had. you know, we all thought the same thing. 
but we are just living every day. I can't, in dude, disappointment. honestly, I can't imagine that. That is the scariest thing to me being in the military, in the Marines, being good at my job and not being able to go and, and, and do it. Yeah. Not yet. It, I don't, it's, I don't it's, know, bro. I think, I think, I think something's going to be, something, something's going to be there for you soon. And I, I'm I, getting that feeling too. Yeah. In the next three years, I'm definitely that's and why. Now, now, when I tell you this, dude, it's gonna be more dangerous than anything before because look how the Marine look look where the Marine Corps is right now, dude. We're I don't care what you say. We're in dude, the middle of it. We're in the middle of an identity crisis. Yes, we're weak right because now because we our merit has been based off of the illustrious foundation that those before us have set, and. In the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, like that could cut it. That was enough. Like yeah. we we're we're damn we're damn fucking good. We're yeah. the Marines. We have our traditions, we have our shit that is never going away, our heroes that we'll never ever forget. And that is why, like that's why we're here and we're not in the army. Yeah. It's exactly. because is because exactly. of the fucking like that that that, that shit. Yes, that special yeah. spice, yeah. that in those intangible things. That is why we're here. But now it's not like that. We must yeah, modernize. Like, yeah. We, we have to. to change to 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 trim the fat and and, and yeah, we have to trim the it's, fat. It's, it's different have, now. It's just different. And, yeah, and, we're and, no longer like the the we're we're going towards like it's a it's a shift in so many things. It's a shift in doctrine, it's a shift in ideology, it's a shift in in methodology just the way shift. the way we fight is completely yeah. different now dude if there were yeah like i i don't know about i think that tactically i think that on our level on the level of guys that are actually going to be doing the thing we're still as solid as we have ever been i yeah. don't think like every i think we're still attracting the same guys especially now because like you get two people. You get two people now because everybody knows how shitty being in the military is at this time, specifically at this time in history. Recruiting being so low. Now you only now you have again like the people that you've always had, like the people getting away from something. Yep. The people that have been in trouble, the people that need to get away from home and the military was the best way to do it. Yep. And the people that were not bred for anything else. So you get those two guys now. Thorough it's breads. not yeah, the thoroughbreds. Yeah. And it's not like the 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 wave of patriotism post 9-11 that that everybody felt. Um that was the cool thing. Like the cool like yeah. the thing to do yep. as a young man was to enlist in the armed Fact. forces and go serve your fuck, go get some fucking revenge for what yeah. happened to us. That's exactly what it was. That, that was what it was, and it's not like that anymore. No, so now if not. you're here, if you're here, it's because you really, really want to be here. If you made this that's choice, true. that's true. Because you really like you've looked at everything. You're like, there's nothing really going on right now. Benefits aren't great. Living conditions are pretty bad across the board. Not even like even like no, they are. Say, it's Air Force too, but oh, well, it's yeah. pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty fucking bad. And yep. but still, and yet, you're still gonna show up. You're still gonna show up and get agree to get yelled at by some 20 something year old who never hasn't, did anything also yeah. hasn't done anything yeah. that you're just you have to listen to just because of you believe in the system you know what i mean like it's not like you can't hold combat over anybody's head and that is that is a positive true. in a way true no i hear you because i hear you you cannot just do like i said earlier the lazy thing of holding well, back in back well, in no I shit. did this and this. I was. Yeah, I hear you completely. You have if you want to earn their respect, you have to. You have to be a dog. Bam. You have to be the fucking best that get, there is. Get in the trenches wanna, with them. Yeah. They want to be like you. You yeah. cannot separate yourself no. from the, no, no, the no. mustache, no. mid fade. I've been to Afghanistan, whatever. Like you must show up and show out. Every Facts. single day Facts. for those guys to give a fuck about whatever's Absolutely. coming out of your mouth. Bam. Just like that. And well that said. needs to be, and it's not like whenever you're in a, a, a place in the organization where that is forgotten, 
and people like well my rank or well my whatever i did before or well whenever it's like shut up shut up now now what can you bring to me what can you teach me how can you lead me at this moment in time i don't care about what happened in 2013 i don't care about what happened in 2016 i don't care about what happened two months ago you're right what can you do for me right now to make me follow you that is it that is that is fucking it you prove yourself to them every single day yep and that's the only way that they could like that's the I'll only hear, not I'll even you, for you not even for you or for for anybody for the for for their mental health you know what i'm saying like you gotta they have to have a purpose too your purpose is to lead them their purpose is to be led and i get like you are robbing them of all that they have like when you don't encourage them to be the fucking best when you don't encourage competition when you don't hold them to a standard yep it's like well then why the fuck did they join the military what else are we doing yeah what are we doing yeah it's like we're not gonna go to war it's like and and we're also gonna suck it's like are you serious can't do it yeah cannot do it so that is if if there's any small unit leaders listening uh that'd be the one thing that i would lead or that i would leave with you is just that like every single day, like we have to create our own purpose as war fighters at, 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 during this time and things, you know, it, it, shit might pop off, but it just in the case it doesn't like you have to create that drive within Facts. your fire team, your squad, your section, your platoon, whatever the fuck it is, you create that force pushing everybody forward. Yes giving them a yes we are all here because we want a purpose we wanted a purpose i came here to kill people i came here for free college you came here for a purpose facts and if you are allowing yourself to be stagnant and allowing yourself to be complacent it's like oh you're gonna get complacency kills you're gonna get yourself killed complacency makes you fucking kill yourself yeah not having a purpose makes you your own enemy because what the fuck are you doing? All of your, like, having a relationship in the military is fucking hard. It oh, sucks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, you're seriously going to give up, like, being able to party, like, being able to have a have a stable relationship, being close to your family, um, not feeling like you're in danger, I guess. Like, not having free time. You're going to give up all of these things to not be the best fucking killer in fuck the that. entire world. Are you serious? You're not even going to be good. Like you signed the four years. Yeah. What'd you do? Yeah. Make the best, make every minute. I'm very happy. I'm very, very happy to hear that from you, man, because yeah, since I started this podcast, I mean, I've been getting a lot of feedback from young Marines and for example, to give you an example, uh, one of the most viral things that we had was I was talking to first Sergeant um, Flynn and constellation uh, group. I love that guy so much. So he was he was talking about um, get the fuck out of the barracks. It doesn't matter where where you're at, dude. Don't get don't be one that gets stuck in the barracks and never does anything and bitches about where he's at, dude. Go out and do something. You can figure it out. You pull money together with your boys, figure something out. And I keep getting these guys. We don't make enough money. We can't do this. Just complain, dude. If you're one of those that let's get that lets simple things get in your way, why'd you join the Marine Corps? Like, shut exactly. the fuck up and push forward and fucking make make it work. I can't believe yeah, the amount of young guys complaining like that, dude. I'm so happy to see that you have the mindset that you do, man. It's 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 a good feeling for me because I've I been just thinking, want more, yeah. I just went once you because went because like halfway through my enlistment, I was super conflicted because I had. Like I had like all that I had, like I said, like all that we have is like advanced school. That's all we have. And then I got to do that as a Lance Corporal and like I was a squad leader. And then I would, you know, like I was a section leader to, in a platoon sergeant as a Lance too. So I had, I had went forward in my career rather quickly um, in terms of like billets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would like, I was like, well, I don't have, I'm a very, like, I like to have goals like in the future, like to, to work towards like, and to be excited about. Yeah. I think that that's a very underrated part of life is having things to look forward to. I agree. 
Um, and I didn't have it. Like, I didn't see a war coming. I didn't see, I didn't have like any thing else that I could prove, I guess. Like I, so it's like, well, where do I go from here? And where you go from there is your Marines. That becomes your, your purpose. That's that, true. that, that, that is, that becomes everything is you get them to where you are now quicker and more efficiently than you were able to do it yourself. That is your new goal. Boom. So if you are feeling like there is no, like you just don't know what to focus on and you feel like, Oh, my, like my chain of command hates me or whatever. Like I, you know, I, I don't know what to do. Like got like, it's hitting people hard here yeah, coming sure. out. Cause they're like, man, I got four more months of this and we're doing Jack and shit. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what to fucking do. It's like, Focus on the guys. Yeah. Focus on the guys because you can always. You, everybody can be great because everybody has the ability to serve others. And we came here to serve. That's a Martin Luther King Jr. quote. Oh. I believe uh, my, my, like my, my mentor, John, he put that, he wrote that in the back of my Bible um, oh. when I went to boot camp. And I remember thinking it was cheesy at the time, but you can live if, if if you are just focused on your own progression and your own path and accomplishing your own goals in life. That's great. And that's more than can be said for a lot of young men in, 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 in having goals and like having moving forward in life. It's kind of a rare thing nowadays because a lot of people just don't know who they are. But that can only take you so far. But if you choose to serve others and try to help others be empathetic and guide them towards their destination, that's joy. Like yeah. that's the spice of life. You can live a million lifetimes doing that, you know, like being a father. Like nobody gets like I heard uh my my stepmom said this said this once and it's a quote it, it always stuck with me i was like what's it like being a mom being a parent and she was like you have you have less happiness but more joy and i did not understand what that meant i was Damn, like that, that sounds hit, like that a, hits hard yeah i was like that sounds like a raw deal when i was like 12 but can understand it when you thinking older, about it yeah, yeah you yeah, have yeah. less happiness but more it's not joy. about it's not about you it's not about you it is not about you and if you if you if if doing your own shit and accomplishing your own goals whatever that's all that makes you happy life is going to get real dark and boring very fast but if you can feel joy yeah. for others and help others then you can live forever that's really shit Seriously. So just start looking past yourself. If you find, feel like find, you don't, yeah. Yeah. If you don't have that inner purpose, then rather than just looking in, maybe you find your answer out outward. Yeah. With uh, with other people. Maybe that can make you help. I agree with you. And that's like the decision to do this, the decision to be I hope to gain that from this. I hope to learn how to take care of other people. And I, regardless of everything that we've talked about and all the bullshit, I would, I would never change a single minute about any of this. I would never change it. I would never do anything. It sucked ass. And I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't do it again, <laughs> but I would never, ever, 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 ever not do it because it sh showed me it shows so much it's, about yourself, dude. Yeah. What really matters. Yeah. What really matters in life. So I. Yeah, man, like that shit is fucking. Dude, honestly, stay, stay in for another, stay in for another turn, man. Stay in. And I know I you can't said do you, it in the Marines, but I'm I, still, I know I'm that going I, to I was going to, I was going to recommend just, Hey, take a look at Marsoc, man. Just take a look at it. I have. Yeah. The thing is, the thing is I, I got buddies that do it. And those guys are a big re part of the reason why I'm going to stick around in the military because they were like, they told me, they were like, dude, if you don't go, 
if you don't go to selection, you're going to wonder for the rest of your life. Yeah, they're right. If you could have. Yeah. And the pain of regret. Don't want to live sucks. with that shit, dude. You don't want to yeah. regret regret. You'll, as you get sucks. older, regret is the, one of the big ones, dude. Yeah. So I was like, that sounds like a haze fest. Like I'm not yeah. going to fucking regret <laughs> shit. Um, but all of the Marsoc battalions are now centralized in like Sneeds Ferry in Lejeune. Gotcha. So that I would be too far away from my mother and my grandmother. Understandable. Understandable. I so if that. I, if I, the, 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 the route after thinking about it for like nine months, the route that I'm taking seems to be the best of everything. All encompassing my family, my personal development, and still trying to give back or I guess not give back, but keep giving to the military because I, I still have more to give. And I have all the accumulated all these tools, you know, throughout the last few years that I still want to put to good use. Um definitely follow definitely definitely follow your acting thing, man. I think it's gonna go your way. Um and I think you're just I, yeah, yeah. I, I think you're. Fe- I got a feeling. Yeah, I think you're one networking event away from really finding something that'll work for you. In that, honestly, I see. I see success in that lane with you. And what now? Just no bullshit. If you if you could do if you had a no budget and someone uh, you know, someone came up to you that did movies and said, "Hey, listen, I got a blank check. You could do any movie. What would you do? Make a movie. Yeah." Make a movie, any movie you wanted. I'd make a movie about being a machine gunner. Yeah, like do it right, do it right. I'd make a movie. I'd make oh, a movie. I love that shit. Yeah, I would make a movie about about everything. Basically, I would make a movie about everything that we just talked about. Yeah, like yeah, about real though, per- like going real, the but pain, at, yeah. the the yeah. loss, uh, everything about it, just like. I love not it. having love being it. being without a purpose. Um, the feelings, coming, the feelings you go through, not the just a, not just a Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, like I'm fucking I'm crazy. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know? The dark. Yeah, like, I, just I love that. I love we're all talk encompass, not this. just the dark shit. Like, like, God, did you know that? War isn't just like Call of Duty. It's actually pretty scary. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I think that we've all gotten at it at this point. Or it's the other way where it's like, I don't know, like fucking Transformers or yeah. like war is yeah, actually yeah. fucking awesome. Being in the military is sick, and it's the only way to prove yourself as a man. It's like, no. It's like, what did we all... What are the... Ob- trying to isolate the objective truths about being... About why, like... Because these intangible things, wanting to serve others, wanting wanting to, to fight, to, to, to make the world a better place, leave a difference. These are really the most human emotions that we could, you could possibly think of. Because none of it makes, like, sense. You know what I mean? Like none of it, like you can't like write it on like pros and cons list on paper about joining the Marines or joining the army or joining the, going to go fight. Like it doesn't, it's not going to hold up in a fucking court of law. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make any sense. It's about like, but there's something about it. That's just so human. Yeah. Doing, I mean, throughout the ages, yourself, protect, protecting your home. Oh. Protect. Yes. Being, strong so that you could protect being strong so that you could help others willing to lay down your life your life for the greater, a guy that you the greater fucking, good if you really it's yeah, the guy it's a guy next to you dude it's the guy next to you yeah and that's the that's one of the craziest things yeah you could fucking hate that guy right that guy could be the biggest doesn't thing. matter he never doesn't, he doesn't never matter. he never pays back your fucking loans like he always <laughs> cheats at poker like this guy can be the biggest piece of shit in the world, but goddamn, doesn't matter because it's always fuck them. The same, we got the same fucking shit on our chest. Facts, facts. That's all that matters. Imagine explaining that to like a fucking alien, like if aliens <laughs> came. It's like, why would you do that? Imagine trying to explain it. You couldn't. It's just human. That's why. It's just because within. I think that it would be a good movie because within the story. Within our story, 
of not just being a Marine, not just America, yeah. whatever, but just going, wanting to go fight. Yeah. Wanting to go fight to figure out who you are. That is it's a lot of double entendres a, that you need to put into that, man. Like, it's yeah, such a many a layers, human, a human tale. Yeah. About like destroy destroying yourself to find yourself to find yourself like i mean to get to joe rogan here on you but like <laughs> that is fucking cool and it it's is. it is it's so unique it's so yeah. unique to us because you can't find like and that's a bit like why people struggle so much getting out is you just can't find that 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 hum that humanity that camaraderie that, camaraderie, that humanity do. We are, we are, we are this generation's, I mean, we are warriors. I don't, I'm not getting corny, dude. We are, that is what we did. Job description. You know what I mean? Like, what we had to be, you know, you see, you, somebody tells you that it's fucking raining outside. You go kill. You kidding me? Like it, that's, it, just hits, it hits different, man. It hits different when you did it. And I'm, I'm really happy that I got you on here to talk to you, man, because you know, you make me confident about because I've been really skeptical at where we are, where we are as a core nowadays, man. I mean, it's just been a it's as been a, long as we still have. That's what I'm saying. Like the the the, the mill influencer space, as long as it you know re subtracting the like the clout chasing fucking morons um, from the equation. But like, as long as we got guys like First Sergeant Flynn, Facts. the mill office, um, like talking about like talking about war fighting, talking about what it means, preaching principles of good leadership. As long as we have like shit like that, like the 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 guys on the ground, like the the, the lower enlisted, like we're not gonna fucking forget. Um, tell me what. Tell me what you think is the epitome or just the best lower i mean lance salty lance salty corporal machine gunner squad leader what what characteristics do they have and what just to, just describe describe that to me describe the the perfect squad leader i mean you're a machine gunner um what does he bring to the table? He is able to understand. He has a broad understanding of the tasks and capabilities of the larger, of the platoon organization that he's supporting. So heavy guns, guys, and weapons company, they understand. That's why when we make orders, we have to include two levels higher than us in the in the, in the tasking statements. You have to have a broad. You have to be able to understand what is going on from a operational and tactical level. The 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 higher space because that that's that gives you the fuel for the war fighting like fire to make decisions on the ground as a small unit leader. Because yes. if you don't understand what's going on around you, yeah. if you don't have that upper level, like platoon commander, company commander type of understanding of tactics and of like what the different elements, like adjacent elements around you are doing, then it, it, it you essentially like you have a blindfold over your yeah, face. You can't do your job. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. As soon as, as soon as like, what you got immediately passed from the first echelon hire doesn't work out or you complete it. You're just sitting around waiting to be told like, and we can't afford to do that no. anymore. No, you can't. Because of the way that we exactly. want to fight wars. We were now. just talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why like. Stuff Russia like that needs to be streamlined. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. That's why Russia is having such a hard time because their NCO core is I've not. Heard that. It's, I've heard that. It is not. Yeah. They have a very centralized command. Very. Like they don't like so when you say that maybe an officer dictates everything to like a squad of guys and sends them out. Like in like in China? 
No, 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 no. Like in Russia, you said that they don't have they have a very centralized. Yeah, they, they they don't have it like they have like the lower enlisted, and then they have like the officers. Yeah, that's what I mean. And yeah. that's how it goes. Like, there's very little in between. Won't, won't work. Won't fucking no. work because no, no, no. like what happens when you fucking lose your radio? You just have dudes sitting in a trench waiting to die because they don't Wait, know which how to we've develop. seen bro that's what it looks like in a lot yeah, of these it's all it looks like they're just yeah. sitting and waiting to die and then a drone they, they comes do over. not yeah having a understanding of what and it leads back to like the all-around marine like concept i would highly recommend small unit leaders um in the infantry to attend I saw west or east because that is a fucking phenomenal school and if you want to talk about getting to that level of understanding of being able to understand like what's going on around yeah. you and not yeah. just what's ahead. Like, yeah. cause like, I'm going to be honest, it's not that fucking hard for a machine gun squad leader to, to learn how to run a gun line or to learn how to look at a series of buildings and decide which one would be the best to put a 240 in. Facts. Like I could get, I could take anybody with a GT score above 90 off the street. And I could explain that to you pretty good in like an hour. Okay. There's little nuances, of course. but the nuances come from working with the riflemen Absolutely. and working with mortars and, yeah. and supporting higher. Yeah. Those are where the little nuances come into play. So have you, have you seen everything come together yet? I'm talking guns, talking mortars, dropping. Oh yeah. High oh, Mars. Yeah. Oh, it is a beautiful oh, thing. Yeah. It's a beautiful yeah. thing, dude. Fucking. It's an awesome, fucking... awesome feeling, dude. The power that yeah. we really do have as like if you if everything works perfectly, if everyone, the teams are clicking, it is a it's a beautiful thing, man. Mm -hmm. That fucking has a shit. Like it's just seeing seeing, yeah, everything. high Mars take <laughs> smoking um <laughs> still coming, fucking yeah. cast yeah. coming in, blah, blah, blah. then heavies open up, blah, blah, blah. then mediums open up, blah, blah, blah. 81s is going. That shit is sick. That shit can't, is can't like, see it, but I got a chub right now. You know? Yeah, I'm getting. Let's just say <laughs> I'm getting hard. I got a little bit of pre cum coming. You know out, what I'm saying? You know? you know what I'm saying? It is that's, what it is. That's why we're Marines, brother. I feel you. Now yeah, that shit is being. Yeah, being able to support the combined arms fight is yeah. what any squad leader should be able. To, like you, it, it, like it isn't just like. We'll focus on the rifleman shit. Like, that's what matters. You're a rifleman squad leader. Or focus on the machine gun shit. You're a machine gun squad leader. That's what matters. Know it all. But yeah, being yeah. able to use your squad the best that you can is being able to understand when guns is having a problem or when mortars is having a problem um, that you can augment, like, and support them and help them out in service of the greater mission. Yep. Um, maneuver warfare is not fueled by guys that just know how to do just their job and just the tasks that they've been given an hour ago like because it never works the, like that dude it's never just no, cut and dry no it never fucking works no. out it never no. works out even plan, in training plan on it not working yes yes and you cannot expect to be able to handle that to handle the plan not working if you don't get the bigger picture facts you need to understand the bigger picture just as well as the officers do just as well as the staff NCOs do, because although that is in their billet description to be the know-it-all in a way, there's only fucking one of them. Fact. And they can only pick who to go. Like, they can. I'm going with first squad, or I'm going with third squad, or I'm going with, if it's a weapons platoon leadership, like I'm going with guns, I'm going with the fist. It's like, they're not going to fucking be there. So their knowledge is of no use to you. Yep. It doesn't matter. Whatever they taught you before, before we stepped off, that's all that you got. Whatever yeah. you chose to learn on your own accord, because nobody's going to make you. You show up, you pass a PF, you get first class on PFT, CFT, you pass your advanced school. Nobody's going to ask anything else of you. You know, like, so whatever you chose to do on your own accord, that's all that you have when you step off. Nobody's going to help you. So you need to be that fucking war fighting encyclopedia and be have, studied up. Answer on, me this. Answer me this. Have you been in a, I mean, you haven't deployed, not but in a field uh training environment have you seen bad leadership have you seen someone that maybe yeah. doesn't know what they're doing and can't ask you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah fuck you oh, that's that is the, the most biggest thing it's the most ignorant the thing in the world to me, dude is that they, 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 they still like everybody can see that they we don't can know what the see fuck it, is bro. going on Just put yourself, but they still refuse to admit yourself. it like, yeah yeah 
you're still going to either keep spouting bullshit yeah. or keep being completely silent when we're all asking you what to do. Yeah. Like, yeah, that is the worst. That is the fucking worst. And then, like, that's the biggest thing that you need to, under like, people need to understand, like, in general, like, in life is, like, we have, like, almost 8 billion people in the world. Billions and billions, billions of more have came before us and died. Nobody ever thought that they were wrong. Nobody ever thought that they were the bad guy. So, pride. Exactly, exactly. You're right. Like, you need to arm yourself with as much competency within your job as you can because you need to defeat like the biggest fucking one of the biggest downfalls that we have is is pride like nobody wants big to time. admit big time they're wrong so if you can understand That's people a, oh, you yeah. can communicate because there's plenty of awesome leaders yeah that knew what needed to be done that you always hear about like guys that got fucking njp'd like they had the right idea, but they didn't know how to communicate. Like That's they didn't communication know communication is to go. huge, huge. Yeah, bro. it is huge. Like you could be saying the right thing, but, but it, because you're fucking yeah. screaming yeah. at an yeah. officer right. in you're front right. of everybody, it's not going to work out. So you might as well have not said anything because all that you just did is was fuck everything. Lower, yeah. yeah, fuck everything up. Lower your credibility within your chain of command. Very true. And take away your ability to. Help out your guys yep. because now your word doesn't mean as much because you exactly seem like a right. hot. Yep. You seem like you fly off the handle too much. You're immature. Yep. Right. So being able to communicate is just as important because it doesn't matter if like you're the biggest, you've went to all these schools and you're the biggest fucking snob. You read all these fucking pubs doesn't and mean you get it. it. You understand, you understand the tactical level just as well as the fucking IOC graduates do. It doesn't matter if you're just a fucking dick. And nobody wants to talk with you and everybody, nobody takes what you know seriously because you just don't understand how to communicate. All right. So that's, that's another big thing is like. Communication needs to be four dimensional, dude. You need, you need to be able to talk to your guys while also conversing with officers and staff and CO. I mean, it's, you need to be able to talk to yeah. all different types of billets and it's not yeah. the easiest thing to do. No, if you, yeah, if you just. Yeah, you're trying and you're trying to make all of them happy. Like at the same, like you're trying to do what's best for and sometimes for they're not on all the same page, dude. You know what I'm saying? That's no. almost the worst thing you gotta deal with is an officer that thinks he knows everything, but literally has no idea or concept of what's going on on the ground. And then you have yeah. a staff NCO that does know everything but can't get it across to the officer, and then you're sitting down there as a corporal trying to get your guys to actually do the damn thing. It's yeah. I sit like I there's one time uh one time uh, a platoon commander was giving me a brief um and he he triple tasked my squad with like in in the same part he triple tasked them it was like it was like it's the classic the classic uh lieutenant tasking for guns which is occupy in order to suppress in order to allow, like, yeah, occupy support by fire, which you could just, in, in case, for any lieutenant listening, you can just say support by fire. Yep. The occupation of the support by fire is implied. Um, but and he triple tasked me in one part, and I go up to his platoon sergeant, and I'm like, like, have you read this guy's order, like, before he briefed it to his platoon? Like, this is, like, this is pretty bad. Like, are you not, like, does he not have to fucking run this by you at all? And he was like, yeah, man, I told him. Yeah, I told him that he's still, you know, he just wants to do this. He's like, are you serious? Like, he told you? You knew? And you were like, well, the lieutenant's just going to do what he's going to do. that happens a know. lot, dude. That happens I a lot. I can't do anything about yeah. it. You can. That Your job yeah, is to yeah. do something you're about literally, it. Literally, you're the guy to do something about it. Yes. You are the guy. <laughs> like you, the guy if, we got. If, yeah. if, if the platoon commander doesn't listen to the platoon sergeant, then who the fuck does he listen to? Yeah. Like that, like what, just the company commander? Like that, like of course he's going to put on his best face for the company commander and say what he needs to but say. This, and this comes this comes back down to, the, to, to be a proficient, salty corporal, my friend. This is probably yep. one of the most important jobs in the Marine Corps. And I'm not saying that to just gas you up or be corny, dude. You need, you're the one that implements this shit on the ground. 
You're yeah, the guy that's and, actually doing, bro. <laughs> and that uh, is what, like, that's, I, a, I talk to, like, when I, I, I talk to uh, people outside the military, like, people from high school, people from college, and, like, they, you know, they're like, oh, I'm telling them about, like, being in the Marines, and be like, they'll say a lot of things that your friend was talking about, like, you know, about, like, this, 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 and that, about, like, yeah, how, yeah, like, yeah all the sh- all the shit and it's like like how do you still like i guess support that or like put yourself in that situation i don't even it's fucking like, think about it there well it's that but like if i know this like objective truth no matter what the conspiracy theory is whether it's the, the hidden agendas the blatant incompetency incompetency the like ulterior motives, the evil, the Illuminati. I mean, isn't the thing that we always get is a lot of guys say they joined for 9-11 and then 9-11 was the government, you know, bombing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so how how, how can you fight for the person that's, you know, killing their own citizens? And then what do we say? What can we even say, dude? We've all watched the YouTube things, dude. We we see it, bro. But I mean. Mm -hmm. What? But. I I don't know what is true. Yeah. I'm 22 years old. Yeah. I don't know what is the objective truth in this situation. But I know one thing. Those guys that are making those calls, they're not going to put a flak on. They're not going to put their Kevlar on. They're not going to put batteries in their 14s and go out and enact the policies and whatever the directives, the agendas that they're pushing. I am. That's us. So... What I can do is I can put myself at the front of that situation and put it, it, myself it on the ground yeah, 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 yeah. and have some sort of influence as the stormtrooper, You're right. as the big, bad American military service member to do what is right. You're right. And I would rather me do it than some fucking... That's a, that's some, a, that's a great answer, bro. Honestly, that's a really good yeah, answer. I, I would rather me be there because i can't do anything about i can't do anything about whatever the administration is going to fucking do they're not going to listen out of our hands whether i believe it or i don't believe it it's gonna (laughs) but i we act as their hand to influence the rest of the world and all that i can do with my current with what i've the situation that i was born into is i can go forth and try to make that influence just a little bit better. Definitely. Maybe I can conduct myself and my Marines in a way that everybody wins in the situation. Somehow. Everybody wins. Maybe I make, you know, maybe, maybe if I go instead of some, some like hillbilly from Georgia, yeah. maybe if I go instead of him, maybe that's one less butt stroke civilian that got too close to the patrol. Maybe that's a little bit more soft spoken of, of a guy like talking with different leaders. Maybe that's a better tactical decision made during a battle that leads with lives saved. Yes. Like I wouldn't, I would never know. And I know that I have been blessed with uh, a, a mind and a body that is able to do these things. So if it's not going to be me, then who's it going to be? I'm just going to let somebody else go out and speak and act for America. It's fuck like that. we want to, yeah, to put, I yeah, fuck you. that. Yeah. We want to put our best foot forward. Definitely. And that is why, regardless, like I I I I know that I can do it. So why shouldn't I? Yeah. Well, why well shouldn't put. we? Well put. Like that's that that's why. It's it doesn't mean it doesn't it's I, I can't affect like the United States is good, the United States is evil. I have no control over that. What yeah. I do have, I can control what's what we, what we, what goes down on the field. Balls. Yeah. Yeah. I what, can make what happens it, go down range. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The best that it can be. Cause they're not going to do that. They're not, they might have control over me here. They might have control over me to an extent there. No, but, but you're right. They ain't putting the, the flak on. Yeah. They ain't putting yeah. the flak on. <laughs> yeah. We, they call us when they need yeah. something done yeah. and we, I can do that. Job we go, we go bump that, in the night. Yeah. Exactly. We go bump in the night. Yeah. So we can hurt if they tell us to do something that involves hurting, getting innocent civilians hurt. We can navigate. We can yeah. still accomplish the intent 
but in the best way, in the most moral way, in the most righteous way that we can. And, and that's all we can we do. Need to, that's all that we can do. That's why we need critical thinking warfighters to Bam. be in the space. Bam. Critical thinking. Because critical thinking, what does that lead to? Accountability. Yes. Accountability. Absolutely. So it's not just one guy. If we're all well-versed on warfighting and one guy makes a bad call, he has nine other dudes being there to be like, well, why? Like, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? How how does that accomplish? That the needs to happen more, bro. That the whys need to be asked. It can't see the old school Marine Corps. Fuck you! You don't ask why. You listen to what I fucking yeah, yeah. said. You know exactly. what I'm saying? No, that yeah. needs to be asked. It does. Yeah, it, and it doesn't. Um, the foundation of that, like you can't. You can say be critical thinking, and be take initiative, and but you don't. You don't have the tools to do that properly. Unless you train and unless yes. you go and advance your yeah. own education Absolutely. on war fighting. And because what are you going to, how are you going to get your, let's say that like, you know, one call needs to be made as opposed to another. How are you going to back that up? How are you going to intelligently and tactfully oh, you know these things? Yeah. convey right. your opinion yep. to your fucking superior leader and how does that how do you how do you you, you need experience for that you need these yeah. schools to do that you need to be well spun up on your enemy that's something i wish i did more do before going to afghanistan instead of fucking boozing in the barracks dude i wish yeah. i did a little bit more uh research Mentee. on afghanistan bro you know what yeah. i'm saying like i mean i didn't know i, I went like, over I went, I went over there ignorant bro i'm just gonna go shoot a bunch of towel heads no bro it's not like that over there man there's there's it's pashtun dari it's <laughs> If, if honestly, we understood yes. why yes. if we, why they were it's there all happening. what they yes. wanted what's going on versus what we wanted yes. like you're right it would have been it would have been different but it's it, we wanted to put it into a black and white perspective we're good guys we're bad guys that's the end of it yeah and that's yeah. that's the narrative that served us at the time and we didn't you know we didn't know we didn't know but that yeah met t is huge huge doing doing a met t on the enemy yep. and understanding why how long they've been there what they're fighting for yep um it's huge but, you know that's and that and that is again that's on like a, you're not going to tell the secretary of defense to do a fucking met t <laughs> on the afghans dude they're gonna they're, they have their whatever their agenda their incompetency whatever they're gonna make the choice that they're gonna make and you can't do a thing about it so no. stop thinking about it there's no point in you even bitching do, yeah exactly yeah. But all that you can do is you can do your metti and you can be the guy on the ground, be the man on the ground who's calling the shots, who's doing, and doing things the best that we can, the I best that we can. I love it. It doesn't. Brother, we're like going we're, we're going on three hours. So I'm going to put a bookmark right there. It's yeah. been it's been a fucking pleasure having you on the pod, man. And I, hope to, I hope to have you on again. I'd like to follow your journey. Um. I'd love any, to. Any, anything you want to leave us with, my friend? Just, yeah, just g going back to what we were we were saying before. It's just give your guy, give yourself, and give your guys a a a a fucking a purpose a purpose as to why they do everything and don't be, do not be the leader that is, that gets mad when they hear the question, why that is the biggest tell of a mentally weak individual, Bam. a highly egoed individual is if you hear the question, why from a subordinate and it somehow angers you or puts you into a state of annoyance. Like if you cannot, it should be an Explain. opportunity to educate. Yes. It's like, I'm glad that you asked why. That is accountability. That's critical thinking. Yep. It's like, what? Like, you're going to say like, oh, take initiative, be a leader, be critically, critically thinking. But when somebody asks you why, you're going to throw a fucking bitch fit. Because I said so. You're not my dad, Give dude. Give me a break. Give me a break. You're not my fucking dad. Yeah, all right. You're not it. my dad. You haven't been, you haven't fucking been downrange. It's shut like, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Just do not be afraid ever to say why you were explain, explain yourself. 
you shouldn't do any you shouldn't do anything in life that you're going to have a problem somebody asks you to explain Absolutely. yourself if you have a Absolutely. problem if you have a, if you have a problem with explaining yourself that or means that you know that you're lazy it, or you, or you know that you're yeah, doing something exactly wrong. exactly incompetency so, incompetency yeah you right encourage your marines to ask the question why there you and have answer it. it there you have it corporal antrim okinawa holding it down hooking in a jabbing i appreciate you brother hard to kill episode hard, hard to kill as fuck er. Er. there we go have a good night brother you too